All right, so I'm I'm looking for some I'm looking for some volunteers to give some testimony. Anybody got a testimony tonight? My sister right here, come on up. All right. Woo. I wasn't gonna do this, but and they didn't ask me, but I think you have a testimony. Praise God, Kelly. Says, Yay! <laughs> here you go. Hi, good night, everyone. Um, my name is Shuma Thomas, and um, I discovered Brother Mike online um, a year ago, or it's 2018. Yes, a year ago, and um, I was having some problems at my church, and um, I was getting angry very easily, and I couldn't understand why things that people did, I couldn't blow it off my head. And um, I got so mad that I left and I said, I'm not going back to church for a while. I needed to cool off because I really wanted to fight. And I know fighting is not one of the uh, fruits of the spirit. So I knew something was wrong with me. So I started to search the Bible, I searched the internet, um, cause I wanted answers, you know, as to why um, I was taking things so personal. And um, I was looking at the African pastor, like his messages, but every time I opened the internet, I, Dr. Mike kept popping up on rejection and I kept brushing it off. Every time I opened the internet, rejection kept popping up and I said, okay, um, if I'm speaking too long, please let me know, right? And um, I said, okay, I would listen to this message. So I'm a baby nurse and I live in people homes. I take care of their babies. So um, sometimes I can't pray as I want, but I listened to the message and it was, wow, eye-opening. I was so shocked um, that everything, the spirit, the, the brother Mike explained about the spirit of rejection was me from conception to the day I received the message. And um, I just started to listen to the message over and over. And the more I listened to the message is the more revelation that I got. The more I listened, I listened to it like three days and I was just crying for three days, screaming in the pillow because I couldn't let my client know that something was wrong. I'm taking care of her baby. But every opportunity that I had, I, I, I kept listening to the message and I kept screaming and, and, and re casting out that spirit and following the instructions that Brother Mike gave. After that, I felt really good. I felt like it's over and um, I'm good. And I realized that a lot of people in the church had the same spirit. So then I understood it wasn't their fault and the reason why they're behaving the way they behave. So after that deliverance, the spirit husband started to act up. Like, I mean, it was there. And, but it just got worse. And um, this is like really hard to say, but I'm gonna say it um, just for the benefit of who might be going through. It was very graphic. I felt as though there was a penis wedge in my anus constantly 24 hours a day. And it was very, very difficult because um, I'm not interested in anal sex. I never thought about it. And um, it messed with my mind because I, I, I couldn't understand this. And um, I couldn't focus on the word. I couldn't focus on praying because um, I was boxing shadows. I would spend hours and hours boxing shadows because I would pray. But it just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And I finally met someone who um, cast out the spirit husband. And I thought, for well, good, I'm good now. But I didn't realize there was more spirit husbands. There was actually three spirit husbands. So when that one was cast out, after it fought me back, messed up my face, it came and said, I wanna come back. And I said, no, I am married to Jesus Christ. I belong to Jesus Christ. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And no spirit can, no evil spirit can dwell in my body. And you know, it came in the form of a dog and it says, if I can't come back, I'm going to make you ugly and I'm going to mess your face up so no man could look at me. 
look at you. And I said, now this is a conversation going on in my head, in my mind. It was not a verbal outward communication conversation. And I said, well, you cannot mess me up because God has made me in his image and likeness. I was made in the image and likeness of God and I'm beautiful. God is beautiful, so I am beautiful. So it doesn't matter if you mess my face, my body, my skin. Job said, though he slay me, yet shall I live. So even if you kill this body, I am still beautiful. My spirit is in the image and the likeness of God. A couple of days later, my face broke out. It was horrible looking, but I, I, it didn't deter me because I, 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 my confidence is in Christ. And I just asked God to heal me. I kept washing my face with the blood of Jesus. It was like pimples that turns into scales and huge sores all over my face. Um, so the, 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 um, the harassment continued and it, it turned into beating on the sole of my feet. I would I feel like someone was literally hitting me under the soles of my feet and then I would feel like something would hit me on my, my knees and then it would run up to my vagina and my anus. Every time this thing happened, it always attacked my sexual organs. And I'm like, okay, what is this now? Because as soon as one, as soon as one deliverance took place, something else happened. And I'm like, God, is, wouldn't there be no rest? It's constantly. So um, early this year, I decided, because it was going on for, for months, in the last year and the attacks was just getting worse and I was just fighting and fighting. Sometimes I would spend seven, eight hours all night fighting. Of course, when I'm at work, I can't fight as I want because I'm in people's home, you know, and I have to stay with the baby, get up and take care of the baby. However, um, the Lord instructed me to go on a 21 day prayer and fast. And I'm like, I really need to get rid of this thing. I don't know what is this. And, um, why my sexual organs has been attacked so much. So uh, I started the prayer and fast in, 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 in February of this year and um, the attack got worse. And I wrote Brother Mike and um, he told me what to do um, in the sense of how to pray and forgive others to follow the instructions of uh, weakening the strongholds of the enemy and to get delivered. Oh, sorry. So, okay. So um, I, I just finally, thank God I'm here. Um, I'm so grateful that God has provided for me to be able to come here. And um, I actually got deliverance last night. And it was nothing that I expected. I, I'm telling you the truth. I, I, I had in my mind, because uh, my childhood was so traumatic, um, most of all of my adult life, it was trauma after trauma after trauma after trauma. And I was happy that I was coming to reach Brother Mike because um, in my mind, I just, I, I, I just thought I needed a therapist who would listen to my endless years of trauma and hurt and, and, and uh, rejection and everything. I just wanted to talk and hopefully that would have helped me. And um, coming here yesterday was nothing like what I expected. Um, I spoke to brother Mike and within 20 minutes, he was able to evaluate the whole scenario, the whole thing. And the deliverance was nothing that I expect. I didn't even expect a deliverance. And I want to thank God because there were spirits there that was rooted and lived in me all my life. I had no clue that, 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 um, the, the queen of the coast was living in me. I, I had no idea. If someone had told me that, I, I would not have believed them. The squid, the octopus, all, all the marine spirits. And the truth is, I, I, I came from Trinidad and Tobago, Tobago to be exactly. I, um, my, my island is surrounded by water and I have no knowledge. I am so ignorant about the marine kingdom. And I was shocked yesterday. I, I, but I want to thank God for deliverance, you know. And, and um, this was, I thank God because he answered my prayer. And, and in Psalms, Psalms 30, it says, I will exalt thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up, and thou hast not let my enemies rejoice over me. 
for, for the Lord my God, I cried unto thee for help, and thou didst heal me. O Lord, thou hast brought my soul from Sheol, and thou hast keep me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, you his godly ones. And you could read the, the rest of the psalm, but I just want to say praise the Lord. I, I want to give God thanks. I want to... I want to just shout. I want to just praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have no idea what I've been through. You have no idea what I've suffered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God is so good. My God is so kind. There's nothing that my God can there is nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing to hard. That's how we start our seminars off from now on. <laughs> as you can, <laughs> as you can tell, there was some witchcraft involved in that family tree, and that's a long story which we're not going to get into tonight. This isn't a witchcraft seminar; it's a Lucifer seminar. So, um, anyway, I'm so glad she came. I wish everybody that got healed acted like that. Wouldn't that be something? That would make that would make the ministry. <laughs> That would take the pressure off the ministry right there. And you wouldn't believe how many people get healed and don't don't even, don't even appreciate it. You'd be shocked to know that. But we just keep going on to the next one, and every once in a while you run into that one. And then that makes all the other ones worth it. <laughs> okay. Uh, since she already rent R-rated, the next seminar, of course, is R-rated. That's our sex seminar next month, okay? Uh, radio programs every day of the week, including Saturday and Sunday, as you know. Uh, you can catch them all off of the website on my uh, Omni FM website. That's also a new one. I've decided to expand uh, the radio ministry to the Internet. I picked uh, the most popular local one I could find. I'm, I'll be on darkskyradio.com every Sunday night at 9 o'clock local time. For uh, 15 minutes, I'll be teaching on that one. If you'd like to uh, donate to a ministry, but you don't have any money, that's fine. Switch over from Google to Good Search. Put in our ministry name, Hardcore Christianity, and they'll donate to us. Same thing with Amazon.com. If you buy stuff off there, you put in SmileAmazon.com. It's the same as the other one. Put in our ministry name, and they will donate a certain percent of whatever you purchase on Amazon. won't cost you anything. Uh, we have five YouTube channels now. Uh, our Thursday night training and deliverance services are on um, the fifth one, which I forgot to put up there. What's the name of it? Thursday night prayer is our fifth one. Uh, should That should have been up there, okay? That's Thursday nights. We are no longer on live stream. Okay? Tonight's, of course, is on our num second one, House of Healing AZ. Uh, here's our mental illness list. If you know somebody who's mentally ill and needs to be delivered or you have a troubled Christian who won't come for deliverance, send me an email and I'll be happy to send you this list. The first one on the list, number one, usually kills it. The first one on the list, as soon as they see that, the devil <coughs> wipes, wipes the whole list out. Number one. They can't get past number one. The first one. And as a, they lose it. It's not a forgiveness. It's not about forgiveness on number one. It's an ought. It's for ought, not forgiveness. That's why people look at it and go, oh, I already forgave all those people. And then they skip it. And then that ruins the rest of the list. Okay? Number one is about ought. All right, YouTubers, don't forget your terror cells. I had another email this week. Somebody opened up a terror cell in their church. And they picked off one sick person 
took them to their home and they got delivered so you just pick off one pick them off one at a time you only need two or three together to do it two or three of you can pick off one sick person in your church it's easy to do I was doing it years ago at the, at the Dream Center in Scottsdale and before I knew it I had people calling me left and right want to meet up Tuesday nights for you know it'll it'll start mushrooming you got to give it a chance though <laughs> all right thank you for your donations we need that uh, steel chair have you ever seen those love seat chairs in people's backyards you ever seen those they're overgrown with weeds and they're <laughs> loaded with dirt that chair if you'll bring that I'll come get it we need a one of those heavy steel Chairs that no one ever sits on it at your house, right? It's sitting back there. It's got bird poop all over it <laughs> We need your bird poop chair Thank you. I'll come get it and put it on my pickup I'll clean it up And I'll set it out front for our counseling clients Yeah Bench, love seat, you know those metal one, heavy metal ones yeah. that nobody sits on, huh? Yeah, heavy like a love seat. Perfect, that would be great. However, if there's no love seat out there with bird poop on it, I will take two metal chairs with bird poop, and we'll put. Okay. I figured a love seat would be a little tougher to steal than two chairs. See. Yeah, yeah, and Ron wants to bolt it down. Well, Ron will get right on that. All right, thank you for your donations off the website. God bless you, and I'll see you in Alabama. Yeah, the football capital of the world, Alabama. See you there next month, and then I'll see you in Casa Grande next month as well. Yeah. Bless you. Thanks for your donations. Tonight's uh, teaching is summarized in the book I wrote years ago. It's in the bookstore. There really is a boogie man. All right, you ready to start? Uh, in 2013, I did a teaching on this, and it was incredibly long. And I went over all the scriptures and nitpicked them all apart. Looking at the Hebrew, looking at the Greek. I did it in 2013. And so if you're interested in that, that's on the YouTube channel. Okay? I took a little different approach tonight. I wanted to show you what he does and how he does it. All right, let's take a look at the very beginning, all right? Real quickly. Lucifer the destroyer tonight. <clears throat> First John chapter 2. Do not love the world nor the things that are in the world. That's the Greek word agapao. It means to show your love to something. It's a Greek verb. And if somebody loves something, you can tell they love it by how they act. Love is an action. Love is an action. You can tell if somebody loves their kids and if they don't. I've had hundreds of Christians come in for counseling over the years who have told me their parents did not love them how they know that they had no real interest in them they weren't affectionate they weren't loving they were gone all the time they didn't care uh, some of those parents believe it or not did love you but they were so wounded and hurt as children they had no capacity to express it some people cannot express love they have love in there but they can't just can't show it they don't feel comfortable and a lot of parents are that way that's the Greek word agapao it means to show you love someone hug kiss an activity something you're doing shows you love well Paul uh, John says don't show your love for cosmos the human world or the things in the world if any man shows their love to the human world the love of the Father is not in him. Okay? Because God does not love these chairs. Even though they're his chairs, 
he told somebody to send me X amount of dollars and I used their money to buy them chairs So those chairs are not my chairs. They're God's chairs, but he does not love those chairs. I Do not love those chairs. I Would love to have a big steel Love seat to sit out in front now The things in this world that I loved for 40 something years living in sin Pleasures money cars houses all of it. I went through the whole cotton-picking thing. It was awful and It ruined my life loving things will always break your heart All that's in the cosmos human world involves this the lusts of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. That's an interesting Greek word. Bios means what you identify with that sums you up as a person. Here in America, the phrase goes like this. What do you do? If someone says, what do you do? That means they want to know what your career is. Because here in America, a, your career or what you do or how you make money is the most important thing. So if your response is I'm homeless bah, No interest in you You're homeless. I'm a lawyer. Oh, how are you doing? I'm an accountant. How are you? I'm a bank president. Oh, see, what do you do? that Pride ends up burning in hell what you do in this world ends up nowhere in the next world There's no bank presidents in heaven There's no there's no lawyers there either. That's for sure <laughs> But your career doesn't follow you into eternity So he's saying here your what puffs you up here is not Of God it's sin okay. yeah. And rich people have terrible problems with that right okay now let's look and see how that works the serpent, the serpent said to the woman You're not gonna die for God knows that the day you eat this fruit your eyes will be open. So here the devil is using the sin that cost him his kingdom. He wanted to be like God, Ezekiel 28, Isaiah 14. So since it worked on him, he knows it will work on us. He wanted to be like God, like divine. And he lost everything because of it. And he knows humans are ever been as stupid as he was. So he goes to Eve and hits her with the same thing that caught him. You'll be like God. Your eyes will be open. Check this out. You'll be just like Elohim, knowing good and evil. In the New Testament, each one of us as born-again Christians are to be like God. That's our goal in life Right we are to have the mind of Christ We are to be like Christ Christ like that's a Christian a disciple is a Christian who behaves like Christ In the sinful world to be like God a Mooney a Hindu of whatever it is that's all demonic pride and he uses it on her and She then he goes to the lust of the eyes. He takes he shows you something that looks good Yeah, remember when you, when you were young Most of you don't recall that here, but there are a couple young people here remember the Your first love wasn't that something? Oh boy, he was hot Oh Man, he was packing she's Bootalicious. You had this. Nobody remembers this. I vaguely remember it at my age, but it is still there. Well, what had happened for the initial look is visual. That's the first shot he takes at you. He wants to pull you somewhere visually, and now he's working on Eve visually. Hey, look at that. This fruit is fantastic. It is fan. Boy, that looks good, doesn't it? He does the exact same thing all the time. 
whether you're working a pole or you're standing on a car lot the salesman's using your lust of your eyes to sell you that car it's the same concept the devil uses homes everything else in this world the things of this world the devil spruces them up so they look absolutely great look it's a tree to be desired and one to make one wise that's another feature of pride everybody wants to be smarter than everybody else the superpowered preachers and the great anointed ministers of, of history were the ones who recognized they didn't know anything and had to get all their knowledge from the Holy Ghost the less of your knowledge you use the greater you become in the kingdom of God the less you rely on yourself the greater you become in the kingdom of God it's the opposite everybody wants to be wise everybody wants to be smart I'm smart you know that's what got poor Fredo in trouble in the Godfather remember that poor sucker he was the older brother I mean, he got passed over see and he always wanted to be up here he wanted to have his own deal he wants something for me he said I'm smart ended up at the bottom of the lake that's what happens when you trust your own intelligence and your own abilities you end up at the bottom of the lake she took the fruit and bird brain standing right there watching her do it instead of slapping it out of her hand and grabbing that snake by the throat and lassoing him and throwing him out of the garden when he wasn't even supposed to be in there trespassing Mr. Stupid is standing there watching the whole thing typical for a husband and watch and then go on the wife's uh, totally deceived and emotionally involved. She's completely out to lunch. He's seeing what's going on is too poop to do anything about it. So he just stands there and watches. And all of a sudden, hell comes to breakfast. Satan has enormous supernatural powers that most people don't know he has. There arose a great storm of wind in Mark chapter 4. The waves beat into the ship. Everybody's read this. A lilaps is a hurricane. Correct? And they woke Jesus up and he was sleeping. And he got up and he rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. Still, how do we know that was the devil? Because that Greek word, epitomao, is the word that was always used to rebuke the devil or demons. So the devil was created a hurricane and was trying to drown him. Now he goes up, one up. The devil will always one up you. Yeah. If a hurricane didn't get you, he'll use a tsunami next. Okay? But if you have the Holy Ghost, there is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful and he will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able to bear okay so the devil will want one up you and he did it to Jesus a seismos is a tsunami an earthquake underwater that's a tsunami same thing happened again and Jesus was doing the same thing again what was he doing taking a nap <clears throat> so why was he doing that He loved water and when he got in the boat you know that rocking thing you ever had that when I was a kid uh, we took a trip this was back in the 50s and high technology was just starting out then and they had these beds that if you put a quarter in it they would vibrate <laughs> You never heard of it, did you? Yeah, you got to be an older person to know this. That's right. But the problem was uh, back in the fifties, coming up with a quarter. Now that's challenging. 
you put the quarter in there and it only took one quarter and I was out like a light. It was so sweet. The bed would jiggle and zoop, I was gone. Well, Jesus had the same thing, but didn't need a quarter. He would use the water, and every time he got on the water, clunk, he was out. Even during a hurricane and a tsunami, still sleeping. Now that's faith. A same Greek word, penomao, the devil did it. Job chapter 1, we see clearly Job was a man that was Tom, morally upright or morally complete, and he uh, eschewed or declined or ran from evil. And the Lord said to Satan when he came to see him, Have you sumleb? Sumleb in Hebrew, Hebrew means focused on or set your heart on or pointing at. Jehovah said, I see you're now coming after him. So Yahweh then pulls a fast one on him. He outsmarts him. He sits down and he goes, you know what? The devil's on Job now. And Job's, he's going to attack him. What I can do is I'll use this attack 3,000 years later to help Brother Mike at the Deliverance Center. <laughs> because this teaching and what I'm going to show in this attack is spiritual information that is priceless. And I'm going to reveal it through this calamity Job's going to go through. So he outsmarts him and he provokes him. He said, hey, have you seen Job? Man, this guy is really something. He loves me. He's serve, serving me. He's doing great. And the devil goes, oh, wait a minute. The reason he's serving you, and now he's talking out of his own heart. He had far more than Job. And he was serving God out of what God was giving him. See? The devil knows we think like him. He said, hey, he's like me. He's only serving you because you gave him everything like you did me. He'll curse you in the face if you take it all away from him. And guess what happens? Well, Job was by what we would call a billionaire, and here's his asset list. It was really shocking at that time. He was like Warren Buffett now. Just filthy rich. He had 500 she-asses, whatever those are. <laughs> and numerous servants, vast real estate. I mean, this guy was, like I said, Warren Buffett 3,000 years ago. Well, he was a servant of the Lord, and the Lord had blessed him. And he had all kinds of assets. Well, guess what happens? The Bible specifically says the devil, using his supernatural power, actually caused all these things to happen. They did not happen by chance or luck. They happened because he did it. And every stinking, total, complete loser that floats into your life didn't fall in there by chance. That's a setup. That person is a plant. The devil sent that imbecile to you to drag you down spiritually, that ex-husband and ex-wife that turned out to be hell on wheels, that person was a plant sent to you by Satan. The devil told you that it was God's will for you to marry him. You went ahead and married him, and hell came to breakfast at your house. The devil can send people to do his bidding. He sent these people over there. They killed his family. They stole his livestock. Then it says the devil controlled the weather. He caused a storm and lightning to hit uh, his family. Uh, he caused other people to come in and steal stuff. That's exactly what happens to you. People come into your life and they steal stuff. Your business partner, somebody you trusted, your friend, a relative. Somebody who said they would help you and didn't. Somebody who pledged themselves to you and then stabbed you right in the back. These people are plants. They're sent in by Satan. He has that power to do that. He can send you rotten losers. Yes, sir. He'll dress them up too. He'll party them out. He'll make them dress almost to my level. 
and they sound like Christians. Oh, he'll send you a Christian. The devil will hunt down a Christian for you faster, and you can even spin your head around. He'll find you a great Christian. He'll find you a Christian on Muslim mingle. <laughs> and they're on there. And they'll come in. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You'll be staring at the flames of hell in about two months. That person's a plant set up to drag you down spiritually, to steal your time and money, wreck your soul. He said, well, the devil can't do that. The heck he can't. You did it to Job. If you don't believe me, ask him. Job's incredible response was, I, I came out of my mother's womb naked, which was a medical fact, and naked I shall return. Okay, now you can see he's going overboard. People go overboard when they're under stress. Nobody returns to their mother's womb. The Lord gave and the Lord took away. Wow, where'd that thought come from? The same person that gave the thought to you. The same lie you believed, Job believed. God sent you bad things. He sent you a bad person. He sent a sickness to you. He sent an illness to you. It's all lies. It's all made up. And you believed it because it was a lie. So did Job. And God was telling you and showing you in this book, He's pulling back the curtain on the spirit world. It was the devil that did all these things, but Job thought it was God. He made a bad mistake. But then he blesses the Lord anyway. Man, he was a great man of God. He really was. Nobody's perfect. No. Chapter 2. Job does it again, and the Lord out foxes him again. He says, hey, if you touch somebody, you touch their body, they'll turn on you. And he's right. He is absolutely right. If a Christian gets sick and they don't get better, they'll turn on God. Is this thing on? Is it? Is this how Mormons tonight? <laughs> if a Christian gets sick and they pray and ask God to heal them and they're not healed, they'll turn on God and they'll get mad at him and get frustrated with him. Hey, everybody does. And the, the devil's saying, hey, listen, this is what I would do if I, I'd turn on you. See, every time the devil opens his mouth, he's always revealing himself. And the Lord says, okay, well, go ahead and Hit him with something, you're not allowed to kill him. You know what happened. Shining, burning ulcers from head to toe. Then what happens? The same thing that happened to you. As soon as you're down and out, you suddenly realize how many friends you don't have. As soon as you're down and out, your friends disappear. Man, they scatter like nets. There's usually, if you're lucky, there's one left. Maybe two if you're a really great person How many great people do we have tonight nobody raised their hand that's what I thought none So that means if you get in trouble only one person if you're lucky is going to be there for you to help you They'll all disappear and The devil will remove them from your life if they're any good He whittles them all off. He killed Job's family. He took his servants he got rid of his assets, but he left him, his three friends, his wife, and a messenger boy, bringing him bad news. That is exactly what is going to happen to us. The devil will try to peel away people out of your life and do you good, and he'll want to leave you with the ones who can do him good. Hello? <laughs> who was left? His, his loving wife. I think he did get her off Muslim mingle. <laughs> one servant. Why do you leave one servant? He killed all the others. You got to have one servant to bring you some bad news. Listen carefully. All the people in your life who are saying negative things to you are plants from Satan and they're doing his work and he's leaving them there and blessing them and helping them so that you get to hear what he thinks. Negativity. <laughs>
and then you'll bring you three friends. Oh, you can't wait to see your friends. These are usually church people. They're usually religious people, and they're whacked out of their minds. <laughs> whacked out of their minds. They got all the answers until something bad happens to them. And they're happy to share them with you. Hmm? Can't you see this? Everything was removed that was his assets that could have helped him. A good friend. Okay. His spouse, his wife, Mrs. Lovely, it's easy to have a good marriage when things are going great. Did you see Job's asset list? Hey, if you're a wife and you got an asset list, that, hey, you know, you overlook stuff. Okay. My wife in my office there. <laughs> you see, no. When things are going well, people will overlook stuff in other people. But when things start going bad, they start looking at you. And they start seeing your assets, which they hadn't seen earlier. Okay? When you marry someone who can't cook, and you eat out all the time, no problemo, right? If the finances go bad and you married somebody who can't cook, you suddenly start noticing the meals. <laughs> this is deep. Job was this great guy to her, but your the people that truly care about you. They will stay with you during tough times and they are few and far between but the Holy Ghost will stick with you closer than a brother for I will never leave thee nor forsake thee the devil will bolt on you in two seconds Job replied you talk like somebody who's nuts and then the devil got Job again just like a born-again Christian in the 21st century he said, should we not receive good from God and receive evil? Oh, man, Job. Buddy, you're just like us. That's what it is. Christians ignorantly think, not seeing the spirit world, that all this crap hitting them is from God. And it's not. It's coming in from the devil. And once you know who your enemy is, you can fight back. The three, three friends, and it's been counted up, said 74 false things to Job. 74 of them. What's 74 divided by 3? 24 and a third. Oh, I hope he comes to every seminar. <laughs> so that means each friend said 24 and a third lies to Job. Those are his friends. Can you imagine the quota of an enemies said they come to see him? They didn't come to see him because they were all rejoicing that he had gone broke. See, your enemies will always rejoice when you go down the tubes. They think it's fun. They like it. And the devil is holding his guts, laughing at you. He does something to you, and then you get mad at God for it. How oh, he's holding his guts, laughing. He can't believe how funny that is. The devil has authority to attack Christians. Let's take a quick look. Here's the greatest Christian that ever lived. Paul. Right? I mean, if Paul walked in here tonight, nobody in their right mind would want to listen to anything I had to say. We'd all sit here like, wow. Correct? I mean, for crying out loud. This guy is at the top. Well, we wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for this guy's ministry. And he says, lest I should be exalted above measure and given all these revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. This has got nothing but controversy over the years, and it shouldn't have. It's so easy to see. It was an angelus. An angelus in Greek is an angel. That's where we get our English word angel from. See the subtle humor in these seminars? You don't get that in a regular seminar. An angel of Satan to do what? Colophizo, lest I should be exalted above measure. No kidding. 
<clears throat> Welcome to normal Christianity Listen, have you ever noticed that when you get a blessing from God something crappy happens shortly after that? There's two sources of that one is a counterattack of the devil and the second one is a Hey, keep it real sweetheart son Keep it real Keep humble keep a normal view of yourself. Don't get puffed up Take it easy Everybody that comes in my office 80% of them let's say to be safe Can't believe it. They can't believe what happens when they come in Shocking spiritual event Before they leave I always tell them hey listen you're gonna get hit within 48 hours You're gonna get hit in 48 hours Why am I doing that I know the devil oh, Thank you Every time you take a step toward God you're being watched in the spirit world and the devil goes hey That piece of crap is heading toward The Son of God stopping and you get targeted for termination most Christians get hit and then they go back a small percent press forward. It's the small percent that God's looking for to win the world He only needs a small percent. He doesn't need the whole group Most Christians cave in and fall apart Drop of a hat not Paul Wow, why was this happening to him an angel a fallen angel was punching him why? To keep him humble. Here's the Greek word kolophizo. There's Muhammad Ali. He died last year or year before. I can't remember. Recently. There he is when he was young. And there's what is he doing there? Hitting the heavy bag. I was an amateur boxer for 10 years when I was young. Had a sterling career. And uh, <laughs> spent hours punching the bag when I was young. Junior high, high school, preparing for marriage, punching away. <laughs> That's Colafiza. What what kind of punching was Paul taking? Thanks for asking. There's the crucial element. We know we know he was getting punched. How? He explains it right here, chapter 11, 2 Corinthians. Paul's thorn in the flesh was what? He mentions the list. And it's inconceivable. I would have collapsed at the first week of this. He goes on and on and on, faced with one challenge after the other whippings, beatings, shipwrecks, stonings, everything. It was it was literally unbelievable. I don't, I don't know how he made it. I would have caved in long before him. There they are, perils everywhere. Perils in the, of the heathen. Perils of Jews, peril, perils of the perils of oh boy, there's the one we're at. False brothers, yeah, geez. they're all over the church. Yeah, they don't really love you. They just act like they love you. Okay? They don't really have a servant's heart. They don't really have a servant's heart. They want to tell you something, and explain something to you, and they teach you something. They don't really care. They don't they're not really servants The false brethren false brothers and sisters in Christ. He had them there now, on top of that all the care of the churches Oh my gosh that drive anybody to happy hour In the Bible as you as we learn in college anybody ever take a psychological testing class in college I did uh, there's they have a thing called positive correlation right if something has a positive correlation that means they both go the same direction right we know we know this in scripture there's a positive correlation between overcoming persecution and increasing the anointing
The devil knows that. If I know it, he knows it. Anything I know, he knows. To the 50 millionth power. He knows he's taken a calculated risk. And it's in his favor. By kicking you in the back. He's risky. There's a risk involved. He knows, or he hopes he knows, you, as a Mickey Mouse, useless, gutless Christian, will cave. You'll cave. He'll kick you right. Ooh. It's a calculated risk. What's the risk? You not caving. If you don't cave, your anointing goes up. Your calling goes up. Your blessings go up. He's risking something by attacking you. But since he knows you well, the probability is you'll cave like you normally do. Not after the night. He's risking something by tempting you. He's risking something by attacking you. There's a risk involved. Because if you don't fail, you're going to be harder to beat the next time. And you're going to be a tougher enemy of him. And he knows that. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, he's going to screw with you. Absolutely. But he knows. He's risking something. He's risking that positive correlation of overcoming persecution because he knows the Holy Ghost anointing in your life will go up. He needs you to cave. So he sends you your spouse. He sends you your kids. Mom, Dad, Jesus. What's he doing there? It's a calculated risk, but the probabilities are in his favor. You'll yell back. You'll get mad. You'll take an offense. You'll get pissed. He won again. Your anointing stays down. But there's a risk involved. After tonight, now that you know what he does, you're going to overcome that temptation, that persecution. You're going to win. Instead of caving, you're going to stand strong and fast in the liberty where Christ has set you free. You will not become entangled again with the yoke of bondage this time. And your anointing will follow a positive correlation. An attack and an acceleration. Paul got heaven and hell beat out of him. He wouldn't quit. And his anointing kept going up. My God. He'd have a healing service. He'd walk past him and his shadow would heal him. Why? Because he took a whipping over here, a beating over there. The Jews stomped the living hell out of him over here. Did he cave in? No. What happened? The anointing went up. There's a positive correlation between the anointing and persecution. Don't you ever forget it. If you cave in, the devil's probability, his gamble paid off. You choked again. And your anointing tanked again. He's got you. Now he comes in with another move. What's he doing there? He's just picking out the stuff that works. He throws out the stuff that doesn't work. He's not stupid. They're far from it. If this worked on you, he'll repeat it. Yeah. Uh huh. You got a lust of the eye problem? For what? Clothes, houses, cars, sex, body. What is it? Whatever it is, that's what you're going to get. It's going to come right at you. Why? He's taking a calculated risk there. He knows it's risky for him, but the probability, based on your previous behavior, is in his favor. He'll take an offense. He'll take a look. 
he wins again after tonight His butts in trouble Because you're seeing what he's doing and you see this positive correlation the anointing goes up as you overcome the last battle this battle that one this whipping that flogging this stoning are we going to go through that? No, we're not Paul. I'm only illustrating the process now. I'm not saying you're ever going to be stoned. This, 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 come on. I'm just using the system here. We will never be treated like this, but the process is the same, even though it's much, much less with us. Correct? Okay, let's take a look at Jesus. Matthew 4, fantastic section of text. Everybody's read this. Ariadzo means to do what? Testing. Temptation is a test. Caused by Satan, allowed by God. Hello? Oh, I hope you got that one. Caused by the devil, allowed by God. Okay? God did not Pretend he was the devil and come to Jesus That never happened the spirit led Jesus to face the devil Is this working? God is not testing you or tempting you he's allowing things to happen He's outsmarting the devil like he did with Job the devil thinks he's got you by the throat and behind the scenes the Holy Ghost is simply Working on another victory. See? It's like that sergeant in Apocalypse Now. See? He woke up every morning, took a big old whiff of napalm. Ah, smells like victory. That was a joke for me. That wasn't for you. That was Ron and I got that. Robert Duvall, I told you you got it. That's a fun. That was a funny joke. We enjoyed it. The high IQ people. <laughs> Periodzo temptation is a test, right? Yes, sir. Now, the devil has to plant something in you to test you for it to be successful. Hello. Oh, we're getting to the guts of it now, literally. The devil plants something in you through your sin or your failure or whatever it was, and then he manages temptations around the plant. If there's no plant in there, those temptations don't go to you, they go to them. I Used to have a money plant, greed plant in there, so I would chase money all the time. Now I never get tempted with money. I've had people call me, hey Mike, you wouldn't believe the investment. Click. It's not in there anymore. I used to have a hot babe plant there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I look great at happy hour After two beers. I thought I was unbelievable <laughs> The devil would bring me lustful women to look at see because he had planted in there. now I don't get any babes at all Amen. <sighs> I mean it's pitiful It's pitiful. I mean I get nothing zero the devil will only test you with something that's already in there. Because he's not stupid. Christians are stupid. The devil's not stupid. He doesn't have time to waste on temptations and tests for you. He knows in advance will not work. See? So he sends you a spouse test. Why? 
because he planted inside there a little sense of loneliness fear of the future whatever it is a little little bit of Christian mingle in there and it's in there so he doesn't send me Christian minglers he only sends them to people who have that thing he put in them hello in people who don't have anything in there this section here is extremely interesting because now the devil is using probabilities there was nothing in Jesus so now he's got to go in cold turkey he's got to use what he thinks are his better probabilities at his genius level of intelligence. It's way beyond genius, obviously. Check it. The Holy Spirit made him go face the devil to save our souls. He had to face him. And he faced him at his weakest spot. What was that? Lust of the flesh. Okay, People that have low self-esteem, rejection spirits, uh, unclean spirits, Many times have problems with uh, addictions, sex, food, drugs, alcohol, prescription drugs, what have you. Well, you know, I don't have that, that seed in there for crack and coke and meth and pizzas. Okay, so, so I don't get a lot of temptations in that area. My God, run around the line. Hey, look at the, this is the best stuff in there. I don't get that. <laughs> People that have those issues get tempted according to those issues, not according to other issues. If you have a low self esteem or a comfort issue or a loneliness or a fear issue, the devil's going to say, hey, here's how you can feel better and overcome that. Here's a pizza. Here's a giant volcano Sunday. Oh, have you ever seen those? Oh, those are good. Those are good. Oh, those are life and death temptations. But I don't get many of those because I don't have a sweet tooth, so to speak. I get all my stuff I get. I just don't get all the stuff you get. Why? Because the devil tailor makes temptations for each person. But with Christ, he had no baseline to operate on because there was nothing in there. So he's going to go with probabilities. Now, these are interesting. Probability one, everybody has a body. And he knew Jesus had been fasting and he was starving. What's he doing to Jesus? Exactly what he does to you seven days a week. He tries to get you to question who you are. And if he can do that, he wins. If he can get you to question who you are instead of being a born-again, blood-washed child of God, if he can get you to question that, he can get you to fall into sin and despair and every un ungodly thing in your life. So he takes a shot at Jesus' body because he knows he's hungry. He's thinking. The devil will tempt you and test you after he thinks. He thinks about you. They think about you. Then they plan it out. Hey, you've been fasting 40 days, right? And you think you're the son of God, right? Oh, that's a joke. Listen, you must be starving, boy. Make that, uh, turn that thing into a loaf of bread. Five 40-day fasts, six actually, Moses did it twice. They don't, they don't come along often. I've never had one. I don't, I don't have any plans to have one. 
Check it out. Jesus said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every rhema word. Logos is the whole concept. Rhema is a portion of it in Greek. Uh, John 3.16 would be the whole love verse. And then for God so loved rhema, that would be a word. Rhema word. Well, we are to listen to every single word of Yahweh. He's saying to the devil. See it? So the devil's playing the odds. It's a smart move. Definitely a smart move. He's hungry. I would have gone there too. Absolutely. Hit him where he's weak. But he gets slapped in the face with God's word. Guess what? There's a positive correlation between temptation, trials, and the anointing. Jesus is Overcame that one up oh, there. It goes Victory power going up The devil takes him up there. Hey physically carted him up there. Okay, did God do that? No But Jesus submitted to God's will and John, Yahweh told him you can have Job's body, but you can't kill him you can take my son up to the temple, but you cannot physically harm him. Oh, you don't understand. The Holy Ghost has got a covering all around you. You don't even know is there. And had you had any idea it was there, you wouldn't be caving in left and right when you're tempted. He took him up to the top of the temple, 700 feet. There it is right there. That's a hike. I mean, first of all, had the devil done that to me, and again, I couldn't take that kind of temptation because I don't exactly feel comfortable with heights. So the devil wouldn't have done that to me because I would have puked on him. Whoa! Oh, God. What a Wrong guy to take up here. He takes him up to the top of the pinnacle. That There it is right there. See it right there? That was 700 feet down to the ground. And then, what is he doing here? He's, he's now switched from his body to his ego. See? Have you ever seen the YouTube videos with these kids, 15-year-old kids that dive off of buildings, fly off mountains, leap out of cars, jump over trucks? They're doing... They're doing things no person, rational person, would ever do because they're extremely dangerous. But they've got ADHD and they're addicted to, demonically addicted to adrenaline rushes. So they have to have that surge and that thrill. It's a ego, pride, thrill oriented sickness. And they literally risk their lives to have these sicknesses, fulfill them. I saw these base jumpers. The guy was standing over there. First of all, I would have thrown right up. They have these suit, like, I don't even know what they're called. Looks like wings. See? And this, I'm not making this up. This idiot jumped off this mountain and started to fly down at, I don't know, several hundred miles. And I got, then he somehow, I don't know how they did it, they went that way. It's the dumbest thing I ever saw in my life. He says, if you're the son of God, remember, during your trial and your temptation, this will happen. It's not when you're not being tempted. He tries to get you to question who you are. Because you're less likely to see yourself as a failure and a loser when you're not being tempted. It's easy to be a Christian when things are going smoothly or going well for you. Oh, everybody's praising God. Hallelujah. That don't mean nothing. The people that are praising God when everything sucks, those are the real Christians. If you're the son of God, he's standing up, wow, 700 feet in the air. Listen, just throw yourself down. And you want to use the Bible? Well, here, I use the Bible. 
<laughs> you got to be kidding me. The Branch Davidians, uh, you name it, one cult after the other. They all use the Bible. The devil loves the Bible. He can quote it back and forth in every language. He used the Bible on Jesus since Jesus used it earlier to overcome the first temptation. He said, oh, you like the Bible, huh? Let me give you some Bible. So he misquotes it to him like he does all of us. He takes the verses out of context like prosperity doctrine. They take it out of context and it seems like it's real. And since he misquotes Psalms 91 to Jesus. What did Jesus do? Oh, he got upset and got into a theological argument with him. No, you're not supposed to get in theological arguments with demon-infected people who misquote the Bible to you. Okay? Knack, knack, knack. Oh, the Jehovah Witnesses are here. Let's bring them in. Let's straighten them out. Straighten them out. You can't straighten demons out, fool. Jesus said, I'm going to ignore your argument about the Bible. I'm going to give you what the Bible really says. And there you go. There's a positive correlation between testations and trials and the anointing. What is that? Positive. And then he rubs it in the devil's face. He's your God. Oh, you didn't want to be reminded of that. No, because he read Revelation. And in Revelation, some no name trainee angel is sent down there no one's ever heard of him they don't even name the guy takes the devil and throws him in the lake of fire rank amateur you'd have thought it'd been michael michael gabriel go down and get him body slam the dude no he say, hey that guy who's that guy who is that angel michael don't even know him Don't, don't you get it? <laughs> hey, that's, he's your God, devil. Oh, that's the way you need to respond to him. Huh? I'm sitting in my truck today. I get out of my truck to help my daughter out of my truck, put her in her wheelchair, take her in her house, and she's, she faints in the car. She can't stand up. I said, nice try. I'm standing there, doors open, she just fainted. I said, nice try. I'm doing the seminar anyway. She wakes up, took her out. <laughs> he, he's your God, Jesus says to him, rubbing his nose right in. Just rub it in him. The devil, that one failed, so he goes to what? Well, what got him? Don't you see that? All these temptations he hit Jesus with, he was going on past experience, his own. What worked on me? What got me? What works on others? The devil is a learner. He's on our mission. He doesn't know everything. He has to learn too. And so what he does, he plays you out. He scopes you out. He tempts you. He baits you. He sends you stuff. He sends you people. He sends you things. He sends you stuff on TV. He sends you neighbors. He sends you whatever he has to do. He fills you up. And in some cases, literally. And he tests you. He figures out where your weak spots are. He sees where you can be had. He sees where your insecurities are. Your, your doubts and your unbelief. He hunts them down. He nitpicks them. He's got nothing in this pick here, so what he's doing is he's going off of his own experience. This is what got me. This is what I've seen others get, so let's try it on this Jesus character. I'm going to try and get him to doubt himself. He thinks he's the son of God. Oops, I failed. I'm going to try to get him to have a thrill. Oops, I failed. I'm going to use his hunger against him. Oops, I failed. What else we got left here? Oh, the thing that killed me. Greed. The thing that killed Judas, greed, material things, money. He says, hey, look, I'm going to show you something. Look at this. Wow, Steven Spielberg would have died to see this movie. Showed him all the kingdom. This was probably the greatest vision in history until John come along. 
The devil said, all this authority, ecstasia, I will give you. And all the glory of it, it's all yours. I'm handing everything over to you. You can have everything I have except one thing. If you will do what I stopped doing to Yahweh, you do it to me. That was his ultimate victory. Now he's one huge. Oops. Now, Upago. What's that? That's divine inspiration for your life tonight. You need to tell these people in your life who's sucking you dry, bleeding you dry, beating you half to death, lying to you, cheating you, hurting you, dragging you down to Hupago, get lost. Hey, if you resist the devil, fight him, he'll flee from you. Get lost. You worship your now he makes it personal and rubs his nose in it again. Okay? I was in a fractional way imitating Jesus at the truck today. That's a nice truck. That wasn't the level of this, but I was sending a teeny message. I'm showing up here tonight and I'm going to tell all these people what you're doing. And this isn't going to change my mind. Nice try. She's listening right now. She's fine. She's in the home right now watching this teaching. Nice try. The devil left him. Oh, don't you get it? There's no temptation tanking you, but such as is common to man. But God's faithful, and he will not allow you to be tempted above that you are able. And that's what happened to Jesus. He wasn't tempted beyond what he was able to bear. God will never do it. There's a limit to what the devil can do to you. There are exceptions to that. Yeah. One of them is if you're helping him. Okay. But if you're being tested or tempted and you're not doing it to yourself and you're not contributing to it, Allah, this temptation here, he can only go so far. And Yahweh told him, don't kill him. You can't kill Job. You can make him sick, but you can't kill him. God's saying that to you right now. The devil cannot kill you. I am in charge of your life. I sent you the Holy Ghost. I'm watching you. And he can only go so far unless you help him go further. There's a positive correlation between temptation and the anointing. If you overcome it, the anointing goes up right along with it. What happened after those temptations of Christ started his public ministry? The anointing goes up if you overcome the trial. If you don't overcome it, ah, oh, got to do it again. Got to go through it again. What does that mean? That means your spouse has to come in the living room or the kitchen and say the same stupid thing to you again tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. What happened to me today? <laughs> I had a strange pain in my leg. I got a strange pain in my leg. Well, what'd you do to get that? <laughs> you ever had an urge to, uh, what well, they call it wife murder, but have you ever had, if I known how I did it, I. You just blow this stuff off. Why? The, te the temptation is to say something, take an offense, get off on that. I just let that go. See what I'm saying? That's a very small example. Nothing like Paul goes through. I'm nothing like Paul. But even little, you know, the devil, half the time or more, he'll put a little stone in your foot that's not going to kill you, but it sure aggravates you. I mean, it's not some kind of a death-killing disease that gets you with. It's the little knick-knack stuff that drives you to drink. 
And he analyzes you and sees exactly what it is that bugs you. Okay? He's the king of the psychiatrist. He scopes you out. And he knows exactly what irritates you. He knows what you don't like in men. He knows what you can't stand about in women. He makes you sure that you get a dose of that every week. You ever wondered why you seem to attract losers and imbeciles and idiots? You ever wondered that? You ever sat down and said, you know something? God, I can't believe this. I just, Bob, Harry, Sally, Brent, these people are goofs. I don't, why are they always hanging around me? You ever notice you always attract business people that want to get involved with you who don't have any money? <laughs> you ever notice that? No? Now you will notice it. They're plants. They're coming after you. What's his greatest skills? Well, he uses supernatural intelligence of what he uses. First, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, it says, the Bible says, I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve. Now, here's an incredible revelation. Exatictao means to totally fool somebody. Eve actually bought that temptation. She believed it. Adam didn't. That's why it's Adam's sin, not Eve's, that has murdered all of us. Adam knew it was wrong. She didn't. She got sucked. Well, that apple or whatever that thing was, that thing is beautiful. And if you eat it, you'll be like God. You'll become wise. Really? She was a textbook. <laughs> Bubble-headed bleach blonde <laughs> Adam knew what was going on so it was Adam's sin that killed us not her she was fooled Hello That's okay, so what it says so don't don't send me an email <laughs> What's he focusing on? Okay, here it is The devil beats Christians by almost always using their mind Lest your minds, what's in your minds? Your thoughts are in your mind. Your thoughts are a product of your mind and your free will. You have thoughts in your mind. Your thoughts can become what? Corrupted. Hey, you Galatians, you, 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 are you got to be kidding me. Have you guys lost your mind? You're, you're going back to Judaism? That never did anybody any good that couldn't save us that only condemned us You're going back there to feasts and tabernacles and Sabbaths and blue moons and really What are you guys nuts? Go back to the glorious gospel of Christ. It's so simple now So simple no sacrifices no blood just Lord Jesus. I'm so sorry forgiven Oh, that's so much simpler than cutting up animals. <laughs> Trust me on that one. Why? The devil had taken the Galatians and put thoughts in their mind about religious things. Religious things are his favorite things. That's how he fools everybody, giving you religious thoughts. He tricked the Galatians. He goes on to mention these three monsters that we have in our society today. What are those? There's another Jesus out there that's similar or sounds similar to the real Jesus. There's a different spirit out there. There's a different gospel roaming around here in America. It's all demonically infected. It's got truths infected with lies. The devil never gives you everything as a hundred percent of a lie. Why? Because you're not that stupid. You're going to catch something that's totally a lie. Duh. Deception doesn't work unless you mingle in some truth. It's the truth that gets you. The truth is the pull. 
God loves you That's a pull positive pull You're a king's kid God wants you to be wealthy I need a limousine payment. Can you donate money to me? Oh, that's the downer. How am I going to get this sad sack fool to donate money so I can pay off a limousine? Let me think about that. Hundredfold. Oh, that's it. That's the ticket. If you donate to me so I can pay off a limousine, God will give you the money back a hundredfold. <laughs> <laughs> hundredfold. That's the ticket. Yeah. Hundredfold. There's another gospel out there. It's a hundredfold. Yeah. Satan's greatest lies are what? Oh, they're so easy to spot, but so hard to spot. Yeah. The first one is I don't exist. If you ask Anybody at NASA Stephen Hawking the smartest guy on the planet died a few months ago. I think earlier this year Remember the guy in the wheelchair? This guy's IQ was like pff, Ridiculous Einstein IQ. He was the atheist He didn't believe in God. I mean he believes in God now, but when he was alive he didn't believe in God He's in hell now screaming I was wrong, but unfortunately none of us can hear him there because people who scream in hell can't be heard here Except under usual cases uh, a few years ago the uh, Godfather of soul James Brown died Remember him He invented rock and roll or something him and little Richard He's at the hospital he's sick as a dog and he's dying and there's relatives in the room and he sits up screaming in his bed screaming He was in a coma He sits up screaming in his bed. I'm burning. I'm burning My lungs are burning. My, I'm burning help. My burning help me save me. Oh my god. I'm burning clunk dead Now what happened there? That's a long story, but the short version is if you give your life to the devil, you dedicate yourself to sex, drugs, and rock and roll, somebody's going to come get you on your deathbed, and it's not the person you're hoping for. I don't exist, is what the devil told James Brown. And he never knew that was a lie until that moment when he woke up out of a coma screaming in hellish agony I don't exist NASA I don't exist evolution I don't exist scientists I don't exist PhDs I don't exist they all believe it Christians can't have demons 90% of all churches believe Christians can't have demons unbelievable lie and on and on it goes it's all lies he lives off of lies Hollywood treats him like he's a commodity and makes fun of him. That's him doing it. He wants that marketing out there First Corinthians 11 once again the mind is where he attacks Christians false apostles deceitful workers Transforming themselves in the apostles of Christ cults are loaded with these kind of peoples Mega churches are loaded with these kind of people and Paul says, don't be surprised, for Satan himself is what? Sketched. Have you ever been to the fair and had somebody sketch your face? Or had your family sketched? That's what that Greek word means. Meta schematizo. To sketch it out. It looks like you. That's what he does. He fakes it. <coughs> he pretends to be a Christian. He's faking He's actually an angel of light. That's a fake godly angel. And then he transforms his ministers into righteousness. Oh, we love kids. We want to save the sex trade. Uh, we, we want to help orphans. We want to see the devil always comes in with good stuff that goes ahead of the bad stuff. He never comes in with the bad stuff. Though. 
He comes over to the positive stuff, the godly stuff. He likes godly stuff. He quotes the Bible all the time. He likes the Bible. He encourages people to read the Bible because he interprets it to them. Mormons read the Bible. Christadelphians read the Bible. Joe Wharton, TV preachers read the Bible. Pull the verse out of context. That's all you got to do. You can come up with any doctrine and support anything in the world if you just pull the verse out of context. It's easy to do. No problemo. There he is. He looks great. He always makes it look great. Yes. He sends people useless miracles that don't help anybody and don't change their character. Don't do any good for anybody. Angel feathers. Those are great. Satan uses sicknesses. He loves to use sicknesses because people get sick. They're physically weak. They get spiritually weak. They get discouraged. And eventually they get mad at God because he won't heal them. The madder they get at God, the further the healing drifts from them. He's, he's thinking about these things. He plots it out. These scriptures literally say in the Bible that these scriptures were caused by the devil. They're listed right there. There's five. Here's nine. All these issues, the Bible says, were specifically caused by the devil. There's another list of his skills. There's 14 specific things in the Bible. So you won't think I'm making this stuff up. The Bible says, hey, that's what that's what he does. He attacks you with sickness, trying to discourage you, trying to get you to doubt, trying to get you to question God, question your faith. He wants you to, if you're the son of God, he wants you to start questioning yourself. I've had over 100 people come in for counseling. They said to me, I think I might have lost my salvation. You wouldn't believe how many times I've heard that. You wouldn't believe it. I've heard it so many times. Another favorite one is, I think I blaspheme the Holy Ghost. I, you know, you can't imagine how many times I've heard that. Inside, I'm going, oh, here we go again. They think it's unique. They don't know. I've heard that a hundred times. When I tell them that, they're not sure if I'm, I'm lying. Or not. They're questioning. They look at me. Wait a minute. Yeah, dude, you got sucked. That lie is one that's constantly repeated. I said to the Lord one day, could, Father, could you help me? Can, couldn't I hear some different lies? <laughs> Crickets. He uses the same lies over and over again. It never ends. Why? They work. Satan uses mind control. That's his secret weapon. It's not hurricanes and tsunamis. And it's not conspiracy theories. It's not politicians, although they're all chock full of demons. He uses people's minds. That's his trump card in this planet. He runs the planet using people's minds. That's his favorite things. And here's what happens. If the gospel is hid from someone, you share it, you preach it, you show it, whatever it is, it is hid to those people who are Ptolemy, lost. Now, in the Greek text, uh, that word there is written in the present tense, but it's it actually means in the process of being lost. Okay? <clears throat> you can be lost and not lost. James Brown was lost and then he was lost. Correct? So he's talking about these people here are not lost, they're lost. Right. They have a it's a process of being lost.
during this process you are technically lost but you are not permanently hopelessly lost correct so are you saved no I'm not well you're lost but they're not lost lost they're just lost lost These people are not permanently like talking about these losses the ones that are in the process of being lost That's why they can't get saved because it, the gospel is being hid from them how The God of this age I own has blinded the thoughts nama of those who do not believe The devil is able to keep you from receiving truth uh-huh in English we word it this way how many times did I tell you well but no no wells or buts I told oh, that person is a plant to suck you dry they're not gonna listen You know, hey, I hate to say this, but I've had to kick people out of here. You know, I'm not talking about ex-wives only. I'm talking about people here at the deliverance center. Here's how it works. People come here originally, and they usually get these incredible breakthroughs boom something great happens and we're incredibly thankful for it. that's the purpose of what we're doing here we want people to get these big breakthroughs that's what we're after okay because if you don't get a breakthrough you can't go anywhere you got to start somewhere so somebody's got to get a breakthrough so the Holy Ghost in his mercy shocks the person boom the person is usually Wow, that is fantastic. That's unbelievable. That is great. And they send a few emails. Oh, this is wonderful. And I'll be back. Then I'll be back. Well, unfortunately, they're not listening to me as I'm warning them that they're going to get A, hit within 48 hours, and B, the devil is not going to just let them come back here and finish their deliverance and their healing and their destiny and Get everything they want from God. It's not going to happen. He's going to fight. Well, they don't. They don't listen. So bad stuff starts happening to them. What? Jeez. Crap. I said, listen. This is perfectly normal. This is how the system works. I explain it to him ad nauseum. That's my job. I am the ad nauseum minister. <laughs> I explain it again and again and again. And then I explain to them listen, here's how this system works over here with Brother Mike. I'm going to go over this with you X amount of time, but you're going to reach a point where you're going to start getting angry at me. Because you don't want to hear that anymore and then you're gonna turn on me and you're gonna start bad-mouthing me and you're gonna start bad-mouthing my ministry team and you're gonna start man bad-mouthing the building and the Mormons we bought it from and, <laughs> and you're and you're gonna renege on your promise to go down that tunnel there and get me them golden plates and you're gonna you're gonna turn on me. Okay? And this has happened 2.2 million times over the years. To me, it's normal. I don't even think anything of it. I'm expecting it to happen. Okay? The per it's not normal to that person. Well, pretty soon the devil, I know the devil's working on him the whole time, and he's explaining to him, listen, brother Mike doesn't do this. 
he's not doing this right over here. Look at he said some things in that service. That's no he's not a minister. Uh, no, he's he's off his rocker. Yeah, they're not the prayer meetings aren't going right. They don't handle the altar call right. The chairs are Walmart chairs. <laughs> and he loves his chairs, and that's a sin. And pretty soon the devil's got this person convinced that I'm a Tillo the Hun resurrected. <laughs> and they start ragging on me. And I, and I explained to him again, hey, listen, this is perfectly normal. I'm not taking the least bit of an offense over it. It is what it is. I know how this works. This ain't my first rodeo. Blah, blah, blah. And then, click. They don't change, and i got to get rid of them. They become a cancer. Why am I getting rid of them? The Bible said to. Jesus said to. Hey, go through the system of restoration. If they don't listen, then they're not going to change. Treat them as a heathen and boot them out the door. Why am I doing that? Because the demons took the person back. They didn't listen. They wouldn't finish their deliverance. They wouldn't keep repenting. They wouldn't keep changing, which is what you have to do. And the devil took them back. And now he's using the person to spread negativity trying to hurt other people's chances of being healed and delivered so I've so I've got to bag them shouldn't have gone into that <laughs> but what I have to do is I have to be sober and I must be vigilant why because the devil's like a roaring lion Running around looking for somebody to gulp down. Catapino means to gulp, not take a sip. I mean gulp you down. And if you give the devil an inch, he'll take a mile. He's not like a Christian and do half a Bible study. No, 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 no. He did the whole Bible study. He's going to bring all the temptation to you. And he's going to kick your face completely in. He's a very thorough person. Boom. That's what he's like. If you somebody described you as that, that would be a reflection of your personality. Correct? That's different than a kitten. <laughs> Brother Mike, he's a scientist. Here's the big four thoughts. What are they? Of course. He puts a lie in your mind. He puts flattery in your mind. He puts a false thought in your mind, a fake doctrine, a criticism of somebody, a nitpick of them. Pretty soon... I'm on your list. Whoa, wait a minute. When I was first met Mike, I thought he was like Moses. Now, this guy's like Al Capone. He needs to go. But listen, it's perfectly normal. Don't even get upset about it. It's no big deal. They did it to Jesus. While he was feeding them peas and beer, everybody wanted to come to the party. Now he's dying on the cross. There's nobody there going to happen to you but as Jesus said to the disciples I'm never alone and you are never alone the devil uses what your mind to control your life he uses people's thoughts to control the planet earth correct if you don't believe me check it out like in Samuel chapter 11, it came to pass one evening, David arose from his bed, walked on the roof, and he'd what? Saw some gal across the street working the pole. <laughs> and she was drop dead gorgeous. What's going on there? Somebody working a pole? No. There's a process going on here of Satan bringing the test in. Temptation is always a test. God doesn't do it. God didn't come down in the form of a hot babe and work a pole across the street. She was doing it, but he allowed it to happen. Correct? Because you're not an android, you're a human. You're a child of God, not a cyborg. The devil is allowed to tempt 100% of us, and we cannot get out of it. And temptation is used by God because there's a positive correlation between overcoming temptation and your anointing going up. 
if you want your anointing to go up, embrace your tests, pass them, and watch it grow. If you do not want your anointing to grow up, sit around whining and griping and blaming others. You will stay at this level a total spiritual failure. Welcome to the majority. You're not going to be the majority after tonight. Nah. You know why? Now you see what he's doing. Yeah. As soon as you see what he's doing, you can beat him. You can't beat somebody. You can't see him. What's going on there? The devil's using her, then putting a thought in his mind. Hey, you had a great dinner tonight. Beautiful. Fantastic servants. Oh, look at that. Steak and eggs. Go on up to the roof and catch a breeze. A benign thought. The devil uses benign thoughts. Thoughts that don't mean nothing. Casual thoughts. He'll use wicked thoughts, evil thoughts, lawful thoughts, prideful thoughts. Casual thoughts. Normal thoughts. Go up on the roof and catch a breeze tonight. Beautiful night out. Look at the stars. He goes up and look at the stars. Boom. Working a pole. Then what happens? Nothing until the other thoughts start coming into his mind. Hot babe, I'm the king. I can do what I want, when I want. Then the thought comes in. Find out who she is. The thought kicks. Wonder who that woman is. He'd never seen her before. It's hard to believe. They must have just moved in. <laughs> So then he inquires, who is that? Bootalicious. Oh, they said, well, that's this person. She's married to that. Well, okay. The thought comes in. Hey, it doesn't matter if she's married. I'm the king. I'm the boss. I'm the, I'm the top dog. I'm the big deal. I'm the big chief. The thoughts are coming in. Can't you see this? He's not an android up there. This is a human being having thoughts put into his mind by Satan. The devil is putting thoughts in his mind as he does yours. Trying to get you to do or say something sinful or stupid. He got David to do everything he wanted him to do. Why? Because David wouldn't catch the thoughts and stop them. He let the thoughts keep coming through. If you don't take the thoughts captive, they will overrun you and you will become despondent and depressed and fearful and scared and hopeless, lonely. Oh my God, I gotta get a Muslim mingle and go. <laughs> First Chronicle 21 the devil says to himself. Hey, it worked on David before It worked on you before I'll just do it again. Oh, don't you understand? Can you see it if you got a pattern of being fooled? He doesn't develop new patterns. He's too lazy. He uses the same pattern Now oh, King David standing up there There it is again sooth. He's pricked how? With a cattle prod? No. In his mind. The thought comes into his mind. Number Israel. He knew he wasn't supposed to do it. What did David do? The same thing he'd done before. The devil got him again. Using the same pattern. I'll put a thought in his mind. He won't take it captive. He'll keep the thought. He'll think about it. And then he'll act on that thought. That's how David does it. Because he's my boy. The devil wants you to be his boy, and you're, he thinks you're his girl. He, he thinks he owns you. So he uses your mind and the thoughts in your mind against you. Since David was his boy, he just said, hey, I'll just do the same thing again. Why not? Boop, thought comes into his head. Boop, another thought come in. He didn't, he didn't stop it. He didn't catch it. He pondered the thought. He kept thinking about it, and sure enough, He does it. Numbered Israel. Everybody died. Zechariah chapter 3. The great prophet sees a vision. And he sees Joshua. Not that Joshua. Joshua the high priest. The other one. Standing and the angel of the Lord standing there. And he saw what? Satan standing to his right hand. To resist him. Oh God. This is your verse. Don't you get it? Did anybody pray today? You should raise your hand if you said a prayer today. You did? What'd you pray about? If it's not too personal, what were you praying about? Well, actually, I was praying for some celebrity. 
people of the Lord told me to pray for him. You were praying for a celebrity. Yeah, you know what happened? What celebrity? Jimmy Curtis. When you were talking Is he dead? About, when you were talking about James Brown, I was the Lord told me to pray for Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page, he's, he's still alive. alive. Yeah. That's a Led Zeppelin guy. Yeah. Okay. Well, the Led Zeppelin guy is getting saved. <laughs> now while he was praying today, I'm serious too. While he was praying today, the devil was standing at his right hand trying to stop that prayer. Zechariah had been given the privilege of seeing into the spirit world. In the New Testament, it's called the gift of discernment, discerning of spirits. You can see into the spirit world. He saw in the spirit world, my God, the devil stands against people who pray. And he's doing what? Encouraging them and blessing them, patting them on the fanny, rubbing their shoulder. No, he's resisting them. He is resisting you in the spirit world. You don't understand. He's trying to stop your prayers. It sure will hurt him. Of course it's going to hurt him. The Lord said to Satan, I'm rebuking you. He said, what would have happened if Joshua, the high priest, said, oh, geez, you know, I just had a thought come in my head. God's not going to answer my prayers. I quit. What would happen then? What happens to all of us? Exact same thing. Your prayer just died. Your prayer is not getting answered. It's going nowhere and you're going nowhere. Why? Because you quit. Quitters never win. God's trying to show you in the spirit world these things are real. This is what the devil does. He's trying to stop your prayers. Satan used Peter. He sure did. Matthew 16. Peter, proslambano, physically grabbed Jesus and yanked him over here to ream him out. Typical 21st century Christian. You get frustrated. You prayed and asked God for this. You thought it was going to go that way. It didn't go that way. You got frustrated. You got confused. You didn't understand what happened. Then you got mad at God. Peter done the same thing. Lord, come here. Pulls him aside. He doesn't want the other 11 imbeciles to hear this. Lord, you, you get like they were married. I've been pulled aside a time or two. They were wrong, though. But anyway, back to this. Lord, you can't die for the sins of the world. You got to stop it. You got to stay here with us. We're building your kingdom here. Here's the way I think it should go. Uh, you're the Messiah. You got the blessings of the bread. This this uh, multiplying bread, Lord, we can kill it with this thing. This is a great feature. Trust me. We can build a massive kingdom with this bread splitting thing you've developed. He thought it was going to go that way. You thought your prayers were going that way. You thought the business was going that way. You thought the ministry was going that way. It didn't go that way. So the devil then came in and told you, hey, God let you down. God failed you. No, it wasn't God. It was your assumptions that were off. Father had some other bigger plan in mind, not the little one you had. Satan uses Christians. That's his favorite. How does he do it? He uses the angel of light on Christians. He doesn't come in with giant whoredom spirits. We want sex. We want lust. Rape kids. No, no, no. That's for the drug traffickers. He comes in with the angel of light for Christians with a lot of good stuff that they will suck right up. Oh, yeah, I like it. That's the way I like it. First Timothy chapter 4, the Bible specifically says that Christians will reach a point where they will leave their faith. 
because they are listening to spirits and teachings of demons literally says that acts 5 peter said ananias why has satan filled your heart to lie to the holy ghost what happens the same thing happens to you that happens to ananias it's so simple the devil takes a little bit of sin here and he puts it in your heart and he then tries to get it to flourish he tries to get it to grow he waters it puts a little food on it fertilizer wind sun let he's trying to get the seed to grow when it reaches a certain point Ananias said hey I just saw some saint donate some land to the revival and he was really humble about it and everybody thought he was a great person I heard these other people talking about him. they heard that they said hey honey let's we can kill this thing let's sell our strip mall and we'll tell them we sold it for this and that and we'll donate this and that and we'll get we'll get some appreciation from what we've done and people will think we're good people too right that's what happened well what, well that couldn't have happened had that little seed not been planted in there you see it all the time in the counseling session rejection from childhood child abuse low self-esteem low self-concept and now you see 50 years later chronic arthritis blooming fibromyalgia clinical depression you see the seed was planted as a child the rejection the negativity the criticism the nagging was planted as a child as a little seed and it grew into rheumatoid arthritis 60 years later it grew into fibromyalgia it grew into depression it grew into bipolar don't you see it it's this little seed of green you know, ananias oh god you know I, I had a horrible childhood i wish people admired me for something well wait a minute i just saw that oh i'll sell my land and then i'll do it Peter saw that it was a seed planted in his heart. It's in here. It's in your soul. And Peter asked him a question. Why did you let Satan do that? Translation, you have free will. You can take these thoughts captive. You can stop this nightmare from overrunning you. Why, Ananias, did you let can't you read it? What it says it right there. I'm not making this up. It says why he's pointing to him, not the devil. The devil he expected to do that. See, the devil you can expect to jack you up. You can expect him to lie and cheat and do everything he does. That's what he does. You don't have to go along with it. You have free will. You can choose the Lord. Choose this day whom you will serve, Joshua said. Thus saith the Lord, I set before you this day blessings and cursings. I set before you life and death. Therefore, choose life. It's you and your children may live. He's talking to you, not him. You choose. Why did you choose to let Satan fill your heart? Why did you? Drug addicts, it's always the same thing. Every darn case. It's always the same. The devil goes, hey, there's my my buddy. There he is. He's an addict. Yeah. What do we need to do to him today? Well, this guy's a punk. And his dad beat him like crazy when he was a kid. And his mother yelled at him all the time. So we can trigger the wounds on his soul by having somebody falsely accuse him of something great idea satan thank you send somebody in to point the finger at him and say he did something doesn't matter if he did it or not just just have him do it point the finger at him he'll take an offense he'll feel rejected that will trigger a relapse yeah sure enough 
somebody comes in hey did you do this and that and that no I didn't yes you did it looks like something you do why well, didn't yet no we think you did it I talked to them and them and they think you did it oh that did it relapse nobody knows anything about addicts Jeez, come on, man. Addicts everywhere now. Everybody's an addict in this country. Aren't they? I mean, everybody's at least a pizza addict. John chapter 13, supper being in, or the devil now put into the heart. Click. Don't you see? It wasn't pizza with Judas, it was greed. If it's not greed with you, it's lust. If it's not lust, it's same-sex attraction. It's not same-sex attraction. It's recognition and acceptance. Whatever that seed is, the devil's got a whole laundry list of seeds. He puts that little seed inside you, and then he waters it and flourishes it, sends you some thoughts, some temptations, some visuals, some memories, some dreams. He'll send you stuff to water that little seed in there, and then all of a sudden, what happens? Judas finally said, I'm going to go do it. But the seed had been planted a long time ago, long before he did it. Your most recent failure in Christ had been planted in there long before you failed. But you didn't catch it. You didn't catch it. Hey, let's get that guy snorting coke again. Oh, I don't know. It's going to be tough this time. He repented and called his dad and forgave him. And uh, somebody was talking to him about his dad, and he made him realize that we had infected his dad with spirits. And we told his dad to do that to him when he was a kid so that now this addict sees his dad not as his abuser anymore, but as someone that we used. So I don't think we can use his dad anymore to get him to relapse. <laughs> That's called renewing your mind in Christ. We got to come up with another thing to get him to trigger. Huh? They're called triggers, right? Judas had a trigger. It was greed. Ananias had a trigger. Low self-esteem. Can somebody like me can can you just like me it's a sally field syndrome you like me you really like me it's low self-esteem it's she was abused in childhood don't you don't can't you see it she won an academy award you really like me that's all she ever really wanted in her life but couldn't get it as a child dad abandoned her doesn't this make sense it's a seed planted in your soul as a child as a young adult as a your first marriage, whatever it was, something was planted there by the devil. Then he watered it, fed it, fertilized it, keep it. He uses the same thing on everybody. No, he doesn't. He tailor makes it. This seed not going to work for you that worked on him. He's a completely different person than you. Correct? Well, I'd be stupid if Tempt you with the same thing I'm with him, wouldn't I? I'd, I'd be an idiot. I wouldn't know what he was doing. Now the devil knows what he's doing. Luke 8. Hey, if you hear the word of God and it falls over here, guess what he's able to do? It says it right there. He can take God's word out of your heart and keep you from being saved. It says it right there. 2 Corinthians 2, lest Satan should get advantage of us because we are not ignorant of his devices. Oh my God. That's exactly what Christians are ignorant of, his devices, until tonight. Yeah. yeah. I told you I was doing this seminar so that truck thing's not going to work on me. Marvel at this, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. No kidding. He comes in with good stuff for Christians. It's always good stuff. And he uses what? Other Christians pretend they're righteous and fake you out. Happens all the time. We call him TV preacher. Second Thessalonians 2, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all lying powers, signs of 
devil can perform miracles and he's talking about the Antichrist and the false prophet right here This is the person coming in the future That's going to have supernatural power like we've never seen before power from Satan First Timothy 5 some of his own Believers and saints had already turned aside after Satan How did it happen? It was the exact same process He starts with a thought plants a little thing inside you He Blooms it he waters it he fertilizes. he gets it to grow and pretty soon you turn your back on God and go back serving Satan How many Christians have you known that have backslidden over the years? They backslide in droves most Christians backslide most of them very few ever get saved and Go all the way in very rarely happens Revelation 2 in the church this church Thyatira this church there was people there who Were involved in the depth of Satan I mean these were super sinners These were people who had gone into Incredible levels of sin We had one person come here this week that was like that Fortunately, it was Rick's case <laughs> Not mine now, I wasn't around when it happened This woman had been dedicated to Satan She had been involved in not even going to spend the time on it. She was sitting out in the foyer there. Have you seen Rick? You know who Rick is? The ASU football player, the guy on our ministry team, the big guy. Teaches here occasionally. He's a really good teacher. This guy's big. He's big. He's big. He's a big guy. He uh, set a whole rack of weightlifting. Records when he was at ASU on the football team Records and this guy's big This woman scared him so bad he wouldn't take her back in his office He stayed out here in the foyer to interview her and He said in the middle of the interview she morphed into a 58 year old woman Now you know why I have a ministry team. <laughs> yeah. I was at home and safety in bed at the time it happened. <laughs> what am I saying there? There's levels of sin, and when you go to the depth of sin, you pick up superpower demons. That girl didn't have any interest in being delivered. You need to get one demon out of that girl. She didn't want to be delivered. You don't understand. You can go so far with the devil that you become the walking dead. You can cross lines in the spirit world you can't get back from. The depths of Satan is real, folks. Revelation 3 in another church. In the church. There was a synagogue of Satan in that church. What? There was the regular church, and inside the church was the synagogue of Satan. What am I talking about in our day and age, 20, 21st century? Mega churches. They have the church, and then they have these subgroups in the churches. They're all alike. They had it back then. It was a deceived people living in sin, teaching false doctrines, lying, thinking they're right and other people are wrong. Happens all the time. It's right there. Synagogue of Satan. Luke chapter 22. After the devil had planted the seed in Judas months ago, finally, after Judas went to the depth of Satan. What happens then? They're gone. I 
I got a call this week from a family that was heading over here to the delivery center bringing a uh, relative teenager who was out of his mind he'd been on drugs and I'm talking to the mother on the phone and in the background I can hear him manifesting demons and the guy is the kid is manifesting and then he keeps saying hi 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 okay it didn't take too much of that before you're not in the mood for high anymore <laughs> I'm talking to the guy and I'm partially getting through to him. Uh, his real personality comes back for a second and then it goes back to high. And then a couple minutes later, then his real personality comes back and he starts to repent. I'm yelling at him, hey, repent. Tell the Lord you're sorry. And he's high, high. And then the highs are slowing down. High, high, high. And then he's, he comes back again. And then the highs come back again. Well, this went on for about 15 minutes on the phone. I said, listen, take him over to the Behavioral Health Center at Mesa. I forgot the name of the hospital there. And after you, they, they'll they admit him for 24 hours. Huh? Desert, Vista. Desert Vista. Take him over to Desert Vista. And they'll admit him for 24-hour safety check. And uh, I forgot the exact clinical name of that. But anyway, I said after he they get him on medication and calm him down and so on, call me back and then bring him over here and we'll get the demons out. But what is going on there? The kid had been on drugs. He was a Christian. He backslid. He went to the depths of Satan and the devil said, hello, now you're mine. You don't understand. The more you know, the greater risk you're at because you're a greater danger to him so he sees you as a dangerous poison so once you backslide and you're willfully and deliberately sinning you have now opened up a door for him to take you That's why the Bible is so hardcore when it comes to sanctification. There's the instant sanctification, the spirit man when you're saved, and then there's lifestyle sanctification as you grow in grace and study to show yourself approved in the God. You sanctify your life as you follow the Lord. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, is what he said. If you know it's wrong and you're doing it, that's worse than when you were a sinner and didn't know it was wrong. That's, that's, yeah, you're asking for it. Your parents said that to you. You kept talking. I asked you to, you're asking for it. Whenever you heard that you're asking for it, you're about to get slapped across the face. Because you were asking for it. You never do that to a spouse, though. That's a, <laughs> that's a trip to Madison down here at Fourth Avenue. But if you were committing adultery before you were born again, that was just fun. After you're born again and you're out committing adultery, you know that's a sin now. <clears throat> you're asking for it. Are you asking for it? If you are, the devil said, I will give it to you. He took Judas. Judas is in hell right now, screaming for mercy. Satan will use everything and anything he can to trick you. Near-death experiences. These are all demonic. Drugs and alcohol, obviously. Here's the next deal. This is going to sweep the country like nothing we've ever seen. Pot lets spirits into your brain so fast it's scary. 
They just jump right into your brain when you're on pot. It's unbelievable. And they're so hard to get out during deliverance. They're terrible. The next big thing is a more pot. <laughs> the next big thing in America is <laughs> additional pot. <laughs> Lots more pot. And well, there's more pot coming. The whole country is going to be overrun by pot. We thought booze was bad and drugs and oxycodone. Wow. The pro is coming and he's almost here. Here you go. Uh, tunnels. These are all demonic. He uses same sex attraction. He loves that. Those spirits are so powerful and they are so hard to get out. They blend into your personality. Oh my goodness, if you don't believe me, they take your personality and turn you into another person. That's how powerful they are. They overrun your personality. They actually overrun your body. You start to look like the other sex. The angel of light, there he is again. He makes you think it's good, but it's not good. He sends you a bunch of miracles with useless miracles. Feathers, levitation, all kinds of weird stuff's coming down the pike now. All kinds of stupid stuff are happening in churches that don't benefit anybody long term. It's awful. Angel of light material. He sends us all infected preachers. What's going on there? It's so easy to see. If you have a nice anointing, it works. If you believe it works and you, your faith has received it, it works. You do not have to be perfect to have a gift from God. If you did, no one would have any gifts. There'd be no gift. So everybody that has gifts from God is flawed. Everybody's flawed. Everybody makes mistakes. Correct? Everybody that has a gift from God is also a flawed person. Is that true? Have you ever known anybody that wasn't? Nobody has. Well, this seed the devil planted in Jimmy Swagger when he was young, like the seed of lust, he never got rid of it, even though his anointing went up. That seed stayed in there. And so the devil just kept feeding it and watering it, fertilizing it. He started to develop behavior patterns, lust of the eyes, porn. Then it ramped up. The devil never leaves that little seed in there just to sit there permanently. Sooner or later, he's going to grow it. And so now Swaggart's going to prostitutes. But that's okay. The devil's talking to him in his mind. Can't you see it? It's so clear. He's not a he's not a rotten, evil, wicked person. He's a good guy, but the devil's tricked him. He's in his mind. He said, hey, listen, your anointing is still working great, isn't it? Yeah. You're preaching like a house on fire, aren't you, buddy? Yeah. Man, you're killing it in the crusades. You're knocking them dead. Yeah. Well, God's fine with it. Don't worry about it. Everything's okay. Click over here. And he's clicking over there. What's it doing there? The devil was setting him up. It was all a setup. Don't you understand these people the devil brought into your life? They're all setups. They're all plans. He tricked Jimmy. Have you ever noticed these scandals? The devil always builds these people up so they're so massively incredible. Everybody knows who they are. They're famous. They've got great gifts. They're fantastic. Because the higher you go, the further you fall. The more people hear about it, and the more embarrassing it is for God the Father. So he just strung Jimmy out, using his mind, his thoughts. You're okay. Your anointing's fine. Nobody knows. Nobody's going to catch you. The people that do know about it, they're covering for you. It's all good. See, it's all thought. But it was based on that seed from childhood, that little lust thing that got in there, and then it grew and got a little bigger, and then he... Don't you see it? This didn't start out at 17. 
They're all like this all of them They got these little seeds planted in there and they don't do anything about it And they leave that seed in there and it starts growing and they don't do anything about it And pretty soon the devil pulls a rug out from under them. Happens to everybody he uses fake preachers people are just out there making money partying he uses spiritual things good things you ever seen this guy that guy is fantastic he's got an incredible demonic gift he sits down with the people and he comes up with stuff you can't believe they can't believe it either and then he always gives them a positive thing it's something nice you know well that's validation your your grandpa's coming through and Fido's with him and there he's licking his face and he feels good about it and he knows you couldn't do anything to save him and he was ready to go when he died he wants you to know that all the guilt and the shame is off of you and he's been watching you and following you around he's helping you oh I feel better don't you see that it's all a fraud grandpa's already in hell that ain't grandpa talking to Henry that's a demon that was with grandpa that knows all about grandpa that can tell you anything about grandpa He's just repeating it to the living relatives fooling them. He's faking them out He doesn't know he's being used He's being tricked and They're tricking them. They think grandpa and Fido are okay But it's all good You don't never seen this guy These channelers they, they don't do that. Here's what they don't do this Well, listen somebody's coming through right now. Yeah, oh, it's it's a it's a guy with black hair I uh, look it, it looks like I'm sensing he died in a bad accident. Oh, that's uncle Bob. Yeah, he got killed in a car wreck Oh uncle Bob. Yeah, he's telling me that he thinks you suck and he hopes your head gets chopped off by cars and you're, and you're eaten by lions <laughs> the devil's too smart for that. That's not what he's going to do. He's going to tell it. Listen, Bob understands that you couldn't help it when you drove off the cliff, and he's fine with you being the only survivor. Don't worry about the guilt and shame. And he knows you got the car fixed, and he likes it. He thinks it looks great. <laughs> the devil uses positive things to fake you out. Fortune telling, oh, it's all the same. Oh my God, this stuff's all the same. It's all demonic. Movies, movies. There's the two biggest uh, horror movies in history: Exorcism and It. This thing here. If you want to know how the devil rewards his servants, read the history of the guy that invented that board. That was really a sad life He uses good things. Don't you see it? That secret movie was so nice and so sweet Oh my gosh, the Holy Ghost is a maid It's something nice Don't you see it's sweet he comes up with something positive Why he's not stupid like Christian Once you know what he's doing you can beat him Okay, here's what you're supposed to do as a born-again Christian. Is there anybody here who's not a born-again Christian raise your hand real quick Everybody here is saying okay well these verses apply to every one of you ready Ephesians 4 Do not give tapas to the devil. That's where we get our English word topography, which is what? You know mats Maps and of land, right? A topographer. Tapas is area or you know space. Do not give the devil area. What do you what does that mean? Don't sell him, don't sell him your house. No, it's talking about area in your mind, in your soul, in your thoughts, in your family, in your home. Don't give the devil any space of any kind because if you do, he always wants more space. See, he doesn't want you just smoking pot. He wants you on this, and then he wants you on that. Then he wants you to take that. Hello? He doesn't want you just on oxycodone, Prince, and then go to oxy. What? Now he wants you on fentanyl, Prince. You're fine with that, right? Clunk. Now you're in hell. 
It didn't start out with fentanyl, Prince. It you give him a little space here, then he takes that space, then he takes that space. He keeps taking more space. Paul said, Don't give him any space. What's your problem? Why do you still have spirits? Why does your life still suck? Here's your problem. When you have the devil in your life for a long period of time, he becomes like a family member. And you kind of get used to him. You get used to the depression, the low self-esteem, things going bad. In fact, you kind of expect stuff to go bad. You get used to people you're not liking you at work and not liking you at home. You kind of learn to live with it. Human beings are incredible creatures. They're able to adjust and adapt to some terrible environments. Absolutely amazing. Uh, to prove, I can prove that. Have you ever seen a TV show called Naked and Afraid? This is this is the most unbelievable. I swear. This is the craziest thing on the planet. They take two human beings, regular people, not, not Navy SEALs or anything, regular folks. You know what they do with them? They take all their clothes off, literally. They don't even give them shoes. They don't give them anything. They take them over to the jungle. They drop them off. Now, that's the worst day I've ever heard of. Me, I've been to Africa three times on mission trips. They were the three of the toughest things I've ever done in my life. And I had friends there, food there, clothes there. Being dropped off in the jungle in the middle, naked and afraid. With nothing. They say, okay, now you've got to start your own fires. You need to develop your own weapons. You have to get your own food. What are you talking about? Who are you talking to, Willis? <laughs> I went to a drive through I wouldn't even apply to be on that show if it was a $10 million payout. It's not even that close. I think they give them 50 bucks. They got to get from here to there, which is impossible. They give them like 500 bucks. They got a line of people lining up for it. You got to be completely nuts to be dropped in the middle of the jungle in Africa, stripped naked. With somebody you don't even know a stranger and your partners yeah uh-huh the worst thing about the jungle becomes the person you were dropped there with <laughs> and as you keep these demons and this disease and this illness and this bad habit and these offenses and these these petty sins and that little thinking as you keep it over and over and over year after year after year as you keep it you get used to it you get used to taking that and swallowing that and eating that and being at this weight and yelling at this person and taking an offense here. You get used to it. And then you can't get rid of it. And here's why. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You must hate and despise one of them. Here's how it works here. People come over here and they say, hey, Mike, Brother Mike, I want to talk to you. What do you want to talk about? Look, I've tried everything. I've been through therapy, counseling, psychiatry, drugs, rehab. Been through rehab five times. I've gone through cleansing streams six times. I've done everything. So and so, bondage breaker. Mike, Mike, what do I do? Well, listen, here's what you do. Click, 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 click. And they do it. Boom, they get the great breakthrough. Oh my gosh, this is great. Now, here's what you got to continue to do. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Why? The part they really wanted to get rid of, they hated. And God got rid of it for them. The other part they didn't hate wouldn't go away. It hangs on. Yeah. I saw it. 
I saw it as clear as a bell. I had this client of mine who was here for a long time. He had paranoid schizophrenia. And he was also uh, smoked cigarettes. And he also had incredible lust, sex addict. And he was drug and alcohol addict. And he was here for years. Yeah. The first thing he got rid of that he hated was paranoid schizophrenia. He hated the voices in his head. He hated them. He hated what they said. He hated all the cursing and swearing. He hated all the lies. He hated those voices. They were gone in six months. He was completely cured. 100% cured. He smoked. He didn't like smoking, but he didn't hate it. So we went down to the altar to within a week of working with him. Bang! God healed him. No urge to smoke. He still got paranoid schizophrenia. He goes home. The demons are hitting him in his head with the voices. He starts to get scared and nervous. <sniffs> lights up again. God healed him, I think, three or four times of smoking until he finally hated it enough to quit. Alcohol, alcohol and drugs gone fast. He hated getting drunk. Hated it because he couldn't stop with one drink. He would drink and then pass out or fall down or whatever. Gone. Gone. God was removing all these horrible things from him based on his free will and his hatred of them. Two left. Lust and narcissism. Two to go. I get the easy cases. <laughs> the lust demons. Four years. You know why? He didn't hate it. He didn't hate it. He disliked it. He didn't want it. But he did not despise it. And so God helped him out. He went on vacation and he fornicated with a girl at a restaurant. And immediately dumped her, ran out, guilt and shame. She got mad and filed a false rape charge. $8,000 later, God saved him. And they dropped the case. And finally, he hated it. And we got that out. The lust down. But it took a disaster. And potential jail time. He was staring at jail time. To do it. One more to go. What was the last one? Never got rid of it. He left the ministry and still has it. And. Still struggling with it. Yes, ma'am. Does some kind of thing be a normal part of what I struggle with with addiction? Is you know that verse where it says you have not because you ask not? 
And it took me a long time to learn that you can really trust God even when I'm angry. And so um, I finally learned that sometimes I had to get on my knees every, you know, few minutes in the beginning to get off the alcohol. So, you know, when I was going through that, and uh, the Lord finally took it. I mean, sometimes doesn't he take it right away? Other times it's kind of like working that spiritual muscle. And I don't think some of us yeah. know to do that. I, I didn't know to do that. I didn't know to, oh, I can depend on God. I can go to him and he's going to. Sure. Yeah, it's all a learning process and in fact, I just went through that whole learning process with this kid And showed you how he went through all of it And where he won and now and where he lost mm -hmm. But trust me if you don't hate it You won't fight against it That's why in war they the, the the military commanders always get the people to hate the other people see in Vietnam They're all, they're not human beings. They're gooks They're all gooks What's a gook? It's, it's a slang derogatory term for a Vietnamese person, but You're training yourself in your mind to see them not as a human but as a gook So you can kill them if you don't hate it, you're not going to kill it. You won't get the demon out. He won't come out if you don't hate it. You have to love the other one. You have to cling to him with everything you got. Like that song, you got to cling to the old rugged cross. You can't just be a casual Christian and get out of the clutches of Satan. It can't happen. It won't happen. It will never happen if you don't hate it You can't get rid of it Submit yourselves to God and and these to me resist the devil and he will fugo run from you and this to me means to stand and fight back How's that work around here it works poorly People come here and they go hey listen, can you Cast this sickness out of me quick and fix me. Can you do that? I go, I can't, but Kelly can, so I get her out. <laughs> but you see, each individual born again believer has to and is commissioned by God to learn to fight on their own. Grace sometimes will bless you with a deliverance, a healing, a temporary deliverance, a temporary, whatever it is, a relief, a, a burdenless move, something like that by God's grace will hit you. We all love that. And we expect it. We pray for it. But sooner or later, each born again Christian has to learn their own spiritual warfare. They cannot depend on the faith of the other person anymore. So what God has to do is take you from here Calling out all the prayer lines and calling all the ministers and running to all the faith healers to here where you fight on your own That's why it says first you must submit yourself to God duh then you must fight back Will you pray for me? Yeah, we will pray for you. But, but when you get over here, you are going to have to be praying for yourself. When you get over here, you got to pray for others. You can't just stay here all the time and have me pray for you. Can you pray for me? Well, we will pray for you. That's what we do here. But sooner or later, you got to go over here and pray for yourself. Then you got to go pray for someone. God calls each born again Christian. To learn spiritual warfare individually. Nobody can do it in the beginning. Of course, we'll pray for it. Of course, you get help. I had to have help. Everybody has to have it. But later on, you must learn. Pray for yourself. You must learn to do self deliverance. You must learn to. 
the deliverance on others If you resist the devil if you fight back at him using your faith he will bolt and run see he likes victims he likes people with pity parties he likes cowards he likes wusses in that order all right let's close up then here they are what do you need to be loose from We need to be loose from. We ask God to give you the gift to hate for it tonight. And guess what will happen to you if you do? Centribo means if I took a plate. <laughs> That's what the Holy Ghost can do. Smashing. Do you have to die overweight, a glutton? Do you have to die a drug addict? Do you have to die an alcoholic? Do you have to die a porn addict? No. What do I need to do? Hate it. Fight back. You will not fight something you don't hate. You will only casually avoid it. Stop that. Come on. No. Leave me alone, jeez. Stop it. Stop it or I'm gonna do this. Stop it or I'm gonna do that. The devil can see right through you. He knows you're not gonna do anything because you're a gutless coward. You got a yellow streak down your back. He's just gonna keep beating on you. Yeah, I'm gonna go have somebody pray for me. The devil go right with you. Hey, can you pray for her again? Pray for her. Yeah, that's good. The devil will encourage the other person to pray for you. Well, that's blasphemy. No, it isn't. It's good common sense. Have another fool keep praying for you instead of teaching you how to fight back. I don't do that here. I'll pray for you, and then I'm going to teach you, hey, you're going to have to pray for yourself now. Now you're going to have to fight on your own. Now you're going to have to fight for somebody else. You're going to have to develop your own anointing and your spiritual warfare skills. You're going to have to become a somebody who's a, a bad Fight back. Win. Can't do it if you don't hate it. No, you can't. It happens in every sport, man. All violent sports are like that, don't they? MMA, football, boxing, what it is. You you got to get yourself in a frame of mind. See? Oh yeah, I was an amateur boxer for years. I lacked something. That's why I quit. You know what it was? Other than skills. I didn't have the killer instinct. You know, the, the, when you're sparring, I like sparring because it's more like friends. You're trying out different moves. You're moving. You're sticking. You're. If you get in a, in a real fight, the other guy's trying to take your head off, and they're hitting hard. They're swinging for the fences. And if you don't have that killer instinct, you can't become a great fighter. You have to have it. They call it the killer instinct. You have to have demons to be successful at a combat sport. Because they give you that extra surge of rage and hate and anger. Yeah, they do it on the sidelines of football. One guy gets in the middle. He runs through this goofy chant. The other ones are going ha, 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 with him. And what are they doing? They're pumping themselves up to go kill the other team. You got to have a killer instinct. You got to be able to fight to the death. You ever seen that movie Gladiator? God, they went through months of training to learn to do what? Kill or be killed. The spirit world, you have to learn it's either you or him. It ain't going to be both of you. Can you pray for me? Of course we'll pray for you. Love to. And then your next step is you're going to pray for yourself. You're going to learn to fight back. You know why you don't care about anybody? You don't do anything? Forgive me for being so blunt. You know why you don't? Because you see the devil kicking everybody's face in, but you don't hate it. 
It doesn't piss you off. If it's somebody close to you, that tends to rile you up a little more. Wait a minute, my daughter, my son. Oh. But if it's that person, that Jesus never had a wife and never had any kids. He had massive Holy Ghost compassion for people being tortured by the devil. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus was angry and hurt over what the devil was doing to people. And he wasn't related to them. He had no family. He had no kids. He had yeah. You know what you need? An incredible gift of hate dumped in your soul. Yeah, I know. I'm a heretic. I'm not a heretic. Jesus had this righteous indignation when he cleaned out the temple. He went in there with a whip and he was throwing tables around and knocking stuff over. He freaked. But it wasn't a sinful freak. It was an outrageous freak over the what they had done to his father's house. They turned it into a target. Selling stuff. Well, you're going to have to do that to yourself. You're going to have to take a Holy Ghost cat of nine tails and just drive these demons out of your body. What demons? The demons that cause you to take offenses, that cause you to overeat, that cause you to use, that cause you to be lazy, that cause you to be a coward. You have to drive those spirits out. They won't leave on their own. They're not going to just leave. And you're not going to fight them back if you don't hate them. If you're not willing to fight, you're not going to do anything. You're going to just accept it. This is the way it is. I mean, that's how it is. Like poverty. Like long-term sickness. Well, I'm just sick. That's how it is. I'm just accepting it. No. No, you're not going to accept it anymore. You're going to repent right now. Wait a second. You're not going to accept it anymore. You're going to start getting mad. Mm -hmm. You're going to start getting mad. Not at me. Mad at the devil and what he's done to your life and your health and your family's life and your neighbors and your friends You're gonna start getting a little steamed Holy Ghost steamed And you're gonna stop Listening to him trick you and make a fool out of you and put thoughts in your mind and steal your attitude and ruin your desires and Get you addicted. You've had enough of it. See That's why I'm speaking for you right now you have had enough of him. You've had enough of him. That's what my mother used to say. Mike, I've had it up to here with your behaviors. That's what she said. I've had it up to here. Well, that's you now. Yeah, you've had it up to here. Okay. Let's pray then. Lord, I just did my Lucifer seminar. He tried to discourage me today. He's done that before. He does it to everybody, not just me, that's for sure. Lord, I'm doing my best here because I know you want to raise up some fighters. I know you want to raise up some people. Who will fight back at people that are tired tired of seeing the devil win tired of seeing him outsmart everybody sick of it and I'm asking you to bless them I want you to bless them I want you to help I want you to give them the gift of hate. <laughs> I want you to give them the gift to do exactly the opposite of what the devil wants them to do.
That's what I want you to do. I want you to bless us tonight, Lord, with the gift of doing the opposite of what the devil wants us to do. If the devil wants us to meet me to eat something, I'll eat the opposite. If he wants me to say something, I'll say the opposite. If he wants me to think something, I'll think the opposite. If he wants me to take offense, I'll give a blessing. If he wants me to get angry at someone, I will forgive him. I'm going to do the exact opposite from this day forward of what the devil does to me and wants me to do, starting today. That's my commitment to you, Lord. I'm going to focus, and I'm going to think like the devil does. He, he thinks when he plots against me. He thinks when he sends me bad people. He sent, He thinks when he puts me in bad relationships. And I'm going to think too. I'm going to use the anointing of God's word and the Holy Ghost. I'm going to think too. I'm going to think about what he's doing. And I'm going to do just the opposite. And I'm not going to be like that guy Brother Mike was describing. Schizophrenic guy. He got 90% healed and then he left pride and narcissism there and didn't finish it off well there's some stuff in my life that I have not finished off you've been gracious to me Lord you've got get rid of this and that and this and this is better and that's better and this has been I thank you for that and I praise you for that but there's some things I left in my life that don't belong there and I know they're not supposed to be there and the devil tricked me into letting them stay. And I'm going to ask you right now to forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. I'm so sorry. And I'm going to repent of it tonight in the name of Jesus. I'm going to change. I'm going to repent and I'm going to change. Okay? Now, if you want us to pray for you for that tonight, we would love to do it. I want you to come up here. I we'll pray for each one of you individually. You see the what the devil has done? You see how he's tricked you? And you want to be delivered from it. And we will stay here and pray with you and help you. And God will heal you like he did that lady that came here from New Jersey. All right? You are dismissed from the seminar. Thank you for coming. Uh, YouTubers, we're going to leave the altar call open. So you'll be able to see and hear what's happening. You won't be able to see very well, but you'll be able to hear what's going on. Thank you for coming tonight. May God bless you for coming to the seminar. I hope that this Bible study was of help to you. I hope that it will change your life and you will see the devil in a different light. And you will, from this day forward, start to pay him back for the misery and sorrow he's heaped on you and your family. There really is a boogeyman. It's in the bookstore. Uh, the basics of this seminar are in that book. If you'd like to have it, you can order it off the internet, YouTubers. Believe me, there really is a boogeyman. And he is a monster. All right, just come forward. We're going to pray with you now. Thank you, Jesus. Ministry team is going to come forward. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Father God, I'm asking you tonight to heal. I'm asking you to deliver. I'm asking you to remove the last vestiges of what the devil has left in their souls and their lives. You've already been healed of several things. You've already been delivered of several things. That's good, and that's the point. That's the point of God's love and God's mercy. You're already a good Christian. You're already a good person. That is an indispute. That's not in dispute. You're already a good person. You're already a good Christian. You wouldn't have come here if you weren't a good person and a good Christian. No one is condemning you here for anything. But the devil put a little seed in there years ago. A little seed in there, and you missed it. And that little seed grew, and now it grew into an addiction. It grew into fibro. It grew into depression. It grew into bipolar. It grew into something ugly. Ugly. Okay? 
two weeks ago, I had a lady come in my office who had rheumatoid arthritis. She got completely delivered of it in one session. All the pain left her joints. It was related to bitterness from young adulthood, people that had abused her. She had bitterness in her soul. She was hurt and she was wounded and it turned into rheumatoid arthritis 50 years later. That little seed the devil put in there. He always puts it in and then it grows. Spiritually, physically, morally. It grows, right? But if you catch it, it will not destroy you. The devil will send you somebody to steal something from you. Sometimes it's your family. Sometimes it's all your money. Sometimes it's your emotional health. He'll steal it from you, won't he? Mm -hmm. And he'll leave you shaky, cowardly, hurt, angry. You feel like fighting back, don't you? Boom. You feel confused. Bad men. Oh, yeah. If he can't plant a seed in there, he'll send you somebody to help him plant it. We can get those seeds out of there. We can. The Holy Ghost can remove anything. Can he? Anything can be removed. Correct? That's what he does. Anything can be removed. Verbal abuse can be removed. Low self-esteem can be removed. Chronic lust and porn can be removed, can it? Bad men can be removed. Same-sex attraction can be removed, can it? Can it? That's a spirit. But you got to repent first. That's the only way. Let's do it. Right now, come on, Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You want to relax yourself there. Come on, just relax. I'm so sorry, Lord. Go ahead, start praying. Father, please forgive me for not removing this little seed the devil put in there years ago. I should have done it years ago. It cost me nothing but pain and sorrow, nothing but sadness. It cost me physically, it cost me financially. It cost me emotionally. It cost me my marriage. It cost me my business. But the Bible says you will restore seven times what the thief steals. And you will restore it now if I repent, if I forgive, if I release. And I'm going to do it right this second. I'm going to release these ugly people these plants the devil brought to me to hurt me to say all these nasty things to me come out of there devil all these ugly people that hurt me all of them that hurt me every one of them there it is let your tears go they're getting ready to come right out you're getting healed tonight honey there they go they'll come right out just just repent of it. Just repent of it. Just open your heart and repent of it. Just repent of it. Lord, I'm so sorry. I'm doubting. I have unbelief. I go back to my sin. I backslide all the time. I'm so sorry. Lord, I let people into my heart and they hurt me. I trusted them and they betrayed me. God, I'm releasing these people right now. Come out of there. Doubt and unbelief, chronic backsliding, chronically going back to sin, chronically going back to mental lust, mental lust, mental lust, physical lust, chronic masturbation. I'm going to repent of it right now. I'm going to repent of it right now. Right now. Come on. I'm going to repent of it. What was his name? What did he do to you? Huh? What, who hurt you? What's wrong with you? 
trouble with it. But you got the anointing on you. Raise your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, just she doesn't know what's wrong with her. She does know. Heal her now, Lord. Heal in Jesus' name. Come out and take a breath and blow. Come out right now. Come on out right now. What you need, honey? I'm just in pain in my body. Yeah, what, what's wrong with your body? I have very heavy pains for the past few years with a lot of clots. And How old are you? Thank you, Jesus. Forgive me, Lord. 30, Say it. Hmm? 33. Oh, okay. And then were you molested as a kid? No. I had breast implants and I just removed them. And I think it's related to... And then why did you have breast implants? I did. Hmm? I did. I don't anymore. I didn't no, why did you originally have them? Well, because they were really small. Okay. That's not the reason. Raise your hands. Close your eyes. Father God, I need you to go back in time now. To the insecurities that were in there. Come out, devil. The insecurities, the body dysmorphia, right in there. She had it when she was young. I don't look good. I need plastic surgery. I need to change. Father, forgive me. And the devil tricked me into it. I repent of it. Say it. I repent. Come on. Pray. Come on. Insecurity. Low self-esteem. Insecurity. Low self-esteem. Come on. Insecurity. Bad men. Raise your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Raise it at a girl. Father God, this poor woman. Just repent of it. You, know, you still got some of that. I don't like my body stuff in your soul. You still have that. Come on, just you gotta repent of it. Father God, this poor woman picked up transfer spirits from bad men. They abused her, they used her. They transferred in just like that. Some of them transferred in during sex. Spirit, come out right now. Every bad man is starting with her dad. Dad, come out. Come out. Come out. Demons from her dad, go. Come out of there. Low self-esteem, come out. And fear. Fears. Low self -esteem. come out. Come out. Take a breath and blow. Come out, Spirit. Come out of there. Spirit, come out now. There he is. Come out. Come out. Fear. That's him. Fear of men. Bad men. Fear of bad men. Come out. Come out of there. Spirit, come out. Quickly, quick. Low self-esteem. Come out of her. Just take a breath and blow. Come out right now. Body dysmorphia. Come out right now. Come out, spirit of infirmity. Come out of that body right now. Bad man, come out. Every ugly man that ever touched your body has to go now. Come out. Hurry up. Come out of there. I release my dad. I forgive him. I let my dad go. Father God, backsliding. Come out right now. Living in sin as a Christian. Come out. Living in sin as a Christian. Keep coughing. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out. Keep coughing. Hold that. Hold that. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Go. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Come out, you pervert. Come out, you pervert. Come out, you pervert. Keep coughing. Come out. Low self-esteem. Come out. Body dysmorphia. Come out right now. Not liking myself. Regrets. Self-criticism. Come out right now. Father God, I want you to help this man of God. He's missing his destiny. He's wasting his life. He's been called and he knows it. He has to sacrifice everything tonight. Everything goes tonight. Everything comes out tonight. Every bad woman. All of it. The porn. The adultery. Come out. The lust. Out of that body right now. You deal with fear. You come out of her right now. Right now. Let her go. Come out of her breast. You spirit of infirmity. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Come on. Forgive my dad and I let him go. Every ugly man that ever touched me, come out of me right now. Come out of my stuff right now. That that ball right there. That's a demonic ball. Come up. Come on up. Come up. There he is. Come up. 
Take a breath. Come out. There he is. Come out. Come out, Don. Keep coughing. Come out. There it comes. Come out right now. Come out in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold that. Hold that. Come out right now. Go, Satan. Go. Come on, sweetheart. Take a big breath and blow. Good girl. Come here. Come on. Now, listen, you've got one. In, in First Timothy, the Bible says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. But of love and power and a sound mind. The Greek word for fear in that verse is delia. It means cowardice or shyness. Shyness. What is that word, shyness? Shy, coward. I am very shy. Yes, that's him. Yeah, I am very shy. Yes. And have anxiety. No, no. These uh, fear things, uh, these uh, Delia spirits always work with fear spirits. They always work together. You have both. The, sh the shyness spirit, the coward spirit, keeps the person from getting help. It makes them like, oh, I don't want to go up there. The fear spirit torments them with anxiety. Hey! Like that. That's him. So it's a one, two, but... Oh, pick that up. You're not done. Come out of there right now. Your dad's got to come out right now. Come out. Every demon from your dad. Come out right now. Come out of your stomach. Come out of your stomach. Come out of there. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out. Satan, lose your hold. Now, somebody like you, you have to listen to me carefully. When you have those kind of spirits, you have to get the gift of hate. Because you let in a spirit of infirmity. And it got in there. It's trying to finish you. And he's going to keep making you sick. They take you down in steps. I said I have been very sick. Hey. I don't have a lot of energy because I'm very anemic. Right. That's him doing that. Ready? Now, dear Lord Jesus, what's your name, by the way? Louisa. Oh, Melissa? Louisa. Louisa. Oh. Lord Jesus, Louisa's here. She's a beautiful woman. Stand right here praying. But when she was young, she did not like her body. And she made a tragic mistake. She got breast implants. And the devil got in. And he brought with him anxiety and shyness and fear. And then he let in a spirit of infirmity. There he is right there. He just jumped. And she is going to drive him out of her body tonight. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. Spirit of infirmity, you have no right to be in my body. I repent of hating myself and hating my body. I repent of being afraid. I repent of being anxious. And I command you to come out in Jesus' mighty name. Adultery, come out of me right now. Sexual perversion, come out. Oral sex, come out. Come out right now. Come out of there. Come out of her. Come out of her womb right now. There he is. Come out. I command you to come out of me right now. Say it. I command you, spirit of infirmity, come out. I command you to come out of me right now in the name of Jesus. What you need? What's the problem? Now, uh, let's go back to the beginning. When did it start? What happened? TV. TV? Oh, is that when the lust got in? Okay. And then the masturbation started at what age? Probably. Teenage? Probably. And then the sleeping with the girls started when? Come out. Say it. What age? 
Young. What do you mean young? I was, let's say, Come teenage on. years. You had your first girl? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What grade were you in? Come out. Come out of my body. Let's say seventh grade, eighth grade. Seventh or eighth? Okay. Ninth grade. Yeah. Now that girl, was it a one night stand or a girlfriend? girlfriend? Come out. Girlfriend. What religion was that girl? I'm not sure. Okay, now it's real easy to see. Before the lust demon got in on the TV, were you ever verbally abused as a kid That's or abandoned? I That's what I, was, I always ask for that. For that, because I don't know. So oh, you don't know. You were raised by two parents. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it looks like a transfer spirit of lust, and then but after. You know my, my, um, my mom think that there was witchcraft in my family. Okay, well, we'll get to that later, though. The main thing is, the main thing is, that's secondary, okay? The main thing is, you went into a life of lust and liked it because it gave you a relief or a break. A fate, a void. Yeah, you could go into that almost like a vacation. You go into a little porn, masturbation, hey... I'm fine. I feel good. And so the demons tricked a person into kind of liking it. Almost in a way you're kind of friendly with it because it's a relief thing. So what we need to start on first is the gift of hate. From the TV at 6th or 7th grade or whatever it was. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Can you see yourself in your mind watching TV at that age can, right now? I can see myself looking at the select TV. I remember the select TV. You probably yeah, remember that. I do. That and that was at what, what age? That was, about? That was Say it. That was, that was young. I don't know exactly. You, you were in grade right? school, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Now, let's do that. Go close your eyes. Just take a big breath there. Now go back right there. You're watching TV right now. Select TV and you're watching the naked gals on that TV. You're very young. Remember that? Father God, I made a tragic mistake when I was a kid and I did not know what I was doing. I let in a lust spirit. He come right in from the TV. He came right in. And, and then he and I became friends. And I repent of it right now. And I'm asking you to give me the gift of hate for him. What happened? Just Anything? And I was praying. Any anger come up? A little Any bit, fight? Yeah, yeah. little bit? Okay, yeah. we're on the right, right rail, road. Okay, now this spirit of infirmity affects you how? Affects my health. How? Do you have pain or you have swelling or what? what is he doing? What's he doing in there? Okay, so I have very heavy periods with clots. Come on. I have, I have very heavy periods with clots. That's him. And I've had it for the past three years and I've been praying. Three years? Yes. And then before that, were you married? I have been I have been married over 10 years. 10 years. Okay, and then your husband... Years. Is what religion? He's Christian. He grew up Orthodox. He grew up ortho in the Orthodox Church? <clears throat> yeah. But he's Christian Did, now. Uh, when your husband was living in sin, what was that like? When my husband was living in sin? Before you met him, what, what kind of life was he living? I think he was living pretty decent, just an average type of a lifestyle. He never, he was never tempted to smoke or drink, or his friends would do that. Did you guys have kids? Yes, we have two kids. Uh, what's their health like? They're good. Neither of them are sick. No, they just, ailments. No, they just have a spirit of fear. They have a spirit of fear too. They have spirit of fear. Well, how old are they? The they watched Monster Inc. Monster Inc. They watched okay. Monster Inc. in the movie theater a few years ago, and yeah. ever since then, they've been picked up fear spirit. Terrified. Yeah. And does your husband have anxiety? Did your mom or dad have it? They did? I think okay. so. My mom does. She has a lot of anxiety, and so does my dad. I get a lot of... 
My dad is a my dad is technically a pastor. What kind of pastor? At a Pentecostal church. Oh really? But more of a religious pastor. So basically at home he was one way with us and at church it was a different way. At home he would beat us up, yell at us constantly and then that would kind of confuse me about the gospel like and I've already been here, repented of that, and I did feel like a release when I did that. Mm -hmm. I had anger bitter towards him, uh -huh. but I don't anymore. I've been right. here before, and I felt like I got right. released from that. Great, great. Now, the spirit of fear must have come from your mother. Or your father's hypocrisy, or whatever it was that got in. Now it's transferred to the kids. It wasn't from that movie. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that from that movie. You think? Because I saw. It well, the fear demon got in then, but you had anxiety before they were went to the movie. Yeah. Your mother had it before they were born. So it's a generational type spirit in that family tree. Yeah. And what we need is somebody to get angry about that. Because that spirit's going to follow your grandkids. They never stop. They go right down the tree. Trust me, they won't stop. Unless you stop them. You can stop them. Because you've already got the dad thing gone. So yeah. you have a nice anointing. You have it. You are able to do it. I used to have bitter towards my dad, but I don't anymore. Now you're going to have bitterness toward this fear spirit in there. And that spirit of infirmity pulling that stuff on your period. That's him doing that. There's nothing wrong with you. He's doing it. Also my mother-in-law. My, my mother-in-law, my husband's mom. What's she like? She, she doesn't really like me. She mocks me a lot. She makes fun of me. She puts me down. Negative thoughts. You're not good enough. What religion is she? She's orthodox. She makes fun of me. She probably doesn't no. like that I somehow converted her son. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Orthodox. It, that's a bad religion. Here's why. It's kind of like Catholicism in that they monitor your behaviors a lot. There's a lot of don't do this, don't, 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 do, 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 kind of like legalism. So that, that uh, background generates anxiety in the person as a youngster because they're wondering, hey, am I doing everything right? And they aren't religious. They just as a they're just orthodox, but they don't go to church. It's just part of their background. His the in laws. Yeah. yeah, and then she's a very critical, negative person. She is. She is. Yeah, and then she dumps it on you. Yes. What's her name? My name. Her name. Adriana. Adriana. Okay. Yes. Remember what you did with your dad? Yes. Go ahead. You do the same thing with Adriana and get her out of there right now, just like you done your dad. Hey, what's going on here? I just wanted to say something. Like, yeah. I used to do all of this. I've done this for years. I've done what? I ministered and did the deliverance in the ministry. Uh huh. And That's not good. No, 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 no. Like, I was, I was doing it in the ministry with others. Like, I'm saying, but what I think, just listening to you and listening to everything, for me, like, I'm sitting back going, okay, God. Like, I feel like I've, I've lost my. Way for a few years, like, yeah. And I'm like sitting here, and I'm not, not that I'm, I'm not trying to be um, prideful or anything like that. But I'm like, Lord, I lost my way, and I think this is your way of telling me like, I gotta snap out of it. And there's been such a just being here. I'm sitting, you know, I don't know if that makes sense, but like I'm sitting here going like, Melissa, you've been sitting for the last few years. Doing nothing. And yeah, okay, like it hurt. Yeah, there's different things that have been, you know, like, you know, I know that there's been, you got it, you were right on with the anger, and it's been a process where it's been, you know, but I, I, it, I feel like it's kind of, like, well, it has been, like, coming up and, and it's hurting out here and there. Yeah, now listen, uh, what's your name again? Melissa. Melissa, oh, it's the pl nice to meet you. Listen, there's nothing wrong with you. You're, you're, uh, I've seen a hundred of these cases. It's easy to fix. 
Here's what happens. You go into the deliverance ministry, and now you become a target. Okay? Deliverance is the one area the devil won't tolerate. Everything else he doesn't like, but he can live with. If somebody gets saved, they'll backslide later. If somebody gets healed, they'll get sick later. I mean, he, can, he doesn't like it, and he fights it, of course. But he can live with it. This he can't live with. Removing a spirit out of there, that hacks him off because that's his control. So while you're in the deliverance ministry before, you're a target for termination, and you get hit with all this adversity, and then you pick up transfers. So frustration jumps in there, and an anger will transfer over from that guy. See? So you come to the service to minister, but before you got to the service, your husband, your neighbor, your friend said something stupid, did something stupid, insulted you, hurt you, something happened at home. The same crap all the time. The devil's always hitting you from different angles. And then you come in and you're a little open. So you're praying and one transfers. That's all it is. You're you're frustrated. It's in the soul, it's anger, frustration. I just uh. There's a couple of things where I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated because one of the there's so many things you said here tonight that I've been going through, and I'm like. You know, like when you're talking about, um, I, okay, right? I, for example, I've been waiting for a husband for many of years, right? I'm going to do that. I pray this, the Lord will bring you money and bless you. Yeah. Nobody's come for years and years, fine. Somebody comes, comes to find out. He's married, going through the divorce. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing is, is that I'm like, Lord, I'm like, is there something that. No. There's nothing wrong with you. They picked up trans. They just transferred. They got in. They snuck in. There's nothing wrong with you. They snuck in. It happens all the time. Deliverance ministry. All the time. No. You can't keep yourself covered. you got to get them out now. It's too late. They're already in. They transferred in. That's already in. Ah. Now you're getting it. Yes. The Lord has a husband picked out for you. He has a husband picked out for you. He just hasn't sent him in because you're not ready. No. There's stuff in there that has to come out. It happens in deliverance ministry.